Okay. We're starting. We're already on. Put on your headset. <laughs> oh, here they are. Hi, welcome to Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel, my daughter. Uh, Jacqueline Schultz. Yeah, no, I know your name. I was trying to think. Of, you forgot your, uh, you didn't, couldn't find your headset. No, but and, I, <laughs> there's so much stuff on the desk right now that you just gave me. I know, gifts. We start with gifts. <laughs> um, so uh, it's another episode. We have a special guest coming in. I think all our guests are special, but this is a guy that's been a friend of mine for decades and decades and I think a friend of the world's for decades, and Bob Saget will be here shortly. I'm so excited. Yeah. Were you a Full House fan? Oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah. Cut it out. <laughs> Dave Coulier, right? <laughs> no, that was the Olsen twins. No, but that came from Dave. Didn't, Didn't it come? Cut it out. Was it, was it one of the twins? Right, but he used to say it to them. It was his thing from his act. Oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and I'll, uh, we, so we got a lot of things coming up. But first, you know, there's a guy here. Uh, you know, I'm always, we are, live in a world of conspiracies. Uh -huh. So this is just, I, I don't know how interesting this conspiracy is. Yeah. But he posted it and he got like 200,000 hits on his conspiracy about me. Yeah. Do you know this? No. Okay, put him on. This is a guy. What is his name? Oh, he's not on live? I don't know. I think he is. I oh. think we'll be able to hear him. He's not here in the in the studio. He's someplace else. Are you here? He he was here and then he just left. Okay, so Wait, that's the back, conspiracy. The conspiracy <laughs> is that we had a guest. <laughs> yeah. And we were told we had a guest and we don't have a guest. Hey. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he Hi. Is. Hey, yeah. You I was trying to log in. It was hair. Let me in. Oh, thank hair. you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so your what is your name? Justin. Justin Wang. Justin Wang. And Justin Wang, you have a conspiracy that, where did you post this conspiracy? On YouTube. Why did you post this conspiracy? So, all right, so pretty much on my channel, like one of the topics I cover is lost media. And someone had remembered a series of games that you had made, uh, the Toon Land series. Right. Um, and so it involved Toon Land, uh, Howie's great math adventure right great word adventure and great reading adventure i don't know if you could see me but i'm holding the math adventure right here as you i can't said. i can't see you no but take my word for it it's don't there's no conspiracy i'm holding this or you can go watch the podcast yeah you can watch it on youtube <laughs> uh, okay so i'm holding the math adventure that's that and then what were the other ones mm -hmm. reading it uh word adventure okay got the word adventure right here so that's that's right here okay and what was the third one and reading adventure okay, and that's the which one i have i holding. have right here and i'm holding right here all right so what's the conspiracy pretty much people are i are, they're just not able to find it pretty much like the other ones you can well, find on ebay you could find <laughs> downloads around with yeah. this one just not a big advantage. conspiracy you know uh, what else i'm not able to find a lot of what like vhs's right yeah <laughs> it's a cd rom yeah. people don't do well, cd roms is, anymore all right so these games yeah any game that people had from their childhood you have fond memories of these kinds of things that people right. just go looking for them i have fond so, memories of the checks i got for like, doing this game yeah so it's like it, it is absolutely a thing that really existed it because it was so difficult to find now people question whether or not it was something that like may sometimes <gasps> things get released get uh recorded and they never get released but you have it there physically so yeah. This is a legitimate thing. So you found, right? This is going to blow up online, right? Found. Because we I, found. I mean, it. I mean, if you, if it, if it turns up on fucking, uh, I'm mean, oh, sorry for cursing. I don't, I don't know if you do that here. <laughs> no, no, we don't but, uh, say fuck. Whenever you, whenever you want to say fuck, try to use the c word instead. Go ahead. The c. Cunt. The c word. Cunt. Cunt. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Okay. That's Don't say fuck one. because we have a lot of young people listening and a lot of church that. going people. So try to use the word uh, cunt when you're talking about wherever you would use the F word. Gotcha. Go ahead. Thanks for the, the tip on that one. But All yeah. Right. Go ahead. But yeah. So now we have, we've confirmed that reading adventure has been out there in the world. Do you have any um, theory as to why this one appears to be like a lot rarer than the others? Uh, I'll tell you why. Because it was probably the one that was uh, purchased the most reading, more than any of the other ones. So um, th they were the first ones to leave the retail space. And then um, 
you know, even though 200,000 people seem to be interested in this conspiracy, that's only 200,000 out of billions. Um, so I, I think that people have them in their home and I didn't hear about the conspiracy, though Caroline, who uh, is a, a producer on the show, is always interested in conspiracy theories. Yeah. So I don't have a conspiracy, but it isn't missing. I'm here to tell you that I found it. See, it's strange that you classify it as a conspiracy, though, because it's it's just it's not really like a thing that like how he's reading Avengers has been withheld from society or something. It's just well, it's a conspiracy. A a like you're remember. saying, I made it. You couldn't find it. You you posted about a conspiracy because you couldn't find it. It's the same thing as saying, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I remember uh, when I was 11, I always had a lot of lint in my belly button, of which I picked uh -huh. out and put on my desk. Can't find any of that anymore. That's gone. Where yeah, is all the lint people, from 11-year-old Howie's people, belly button? People don't really have fond childhood memories of your belly button lint. Hey, 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 hey. Howie's don't presume. On the other hand. Don't presume. This is before <laughs> my belly button lint was before um, uh, CD-ROMs, before VHS, before Betamax. It was people loved my lint. They could play games with it, softball, little tiny softball just with their fingers. They could floss if their mothers wanted them to and they didn't want to purchase on flood. There was so much childhood memories that people got from Howie Mandel belly button lint. So don't... Don't overshadow. You are, if there's one thing that you're known for, it's your versatility. So I, I 100% appreciate the fact that your belly button lint is, uh, is it's up there with the Howie Adventures. And why are we talking to you in an automobile? You're in a, some sort of oh, a Jeep or an automobile yeah. or a truck. So right now my band is on tour. Normally I have my studio at home that I would be able to, uh, you know, do well, something. Let's plug with the band. Together. Who's your band? Yeah, my band is called Jinx. Jinx. And where can yeah, they be Jay seen? Lines. Well, nobody could find um, Jinx. We're doing a full yeah. U.S. tour, um, uh, opening up for Attila. Wow. Tonight we're in. Uh, tonight we are in Rochester, New York. At but that was two, for people listening. Now that was probably two weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. So you yeah. missed the show, but that's okay. That you got to feel people are more apt to want to come out to something they missed or something they didn't get to do. Is there any way, Carolyn, we can play? Uh, do, can you suggest a, a little clip of a song? We'll play, we'll give a little Jinx. Uh, promo here. Yeah, the um the new song that we just put out. It's called Heat Wave ninety eight. Let's listen to a little bit of Heat Wave ninety eight, Caroline. Use your imagination, people. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Shoulda, shoulda, then curved. You didn't know what happened. Shoulda made you fall off the face of the earth from the Wow. Me and my daughter here, Jacqueline, we did a little uh, just two-person mosh pit, and we had the time oh, yeah. of our lives. It was like a I festival for that. two. My friend does music like that. Um, do Rob you know Zombie. Suffocate. So he he's in a oh, band. Oh, Suffocate. Called, yeah. yeah, my Suffocate friend is dope. the drummer, Lars. Lars Diaz. Okay. There's yeah. a lot of Lars drummers. Do you know that? Yeah. So if you're named Lars, then you have to be a drummer, right. I guess. And you got <laughs> rock and roll hair too. You, you do you? What what do you what do you do in the band? I play guitar. Wow. Are you going to be in the L.A. area anytime soon? Yes, actually. Um, I don't have my... Actually, wait, I do have my tour pass on me. Yeah, we're in L.A. in a L.A. area on the 24th and at the El Rey. At the El Rey? Well, that's a... Wow, you guys are doing it. That's a great club. So the 24th in the L. Rey, this will be out by that time. So they'll hear it. They'll, they heard you. And then if you show up at the show and you say uh, you found uh, Howie's word adventure, Jinx will let you backstage and yeah, uh, that's, to watch them. Forget about all the, 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 with the, the COVID regulations they're putting on this store. It's like everyone's but, going through this time. Oh, no, but you do have, are there a lot of COVID? I, I'm really afraid oh, yeah. of uh, performing inside. So th does the audience, because I would imagine with that kind of music, that kind of music is only enjoyed in a very tight knit, sweaty kind of an experience. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And that's at its uh, peak. So it's weird because like the, the shows, like they're still like normal and like, and like how you would have people like standing on the floor together and whatnot. But then it's like, kind of like what we're allowed to do, like, where there's limits on how many people like we can bring around certain areas, traveling to certain areas. No stage kind of diving, funny. right? No stage diving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's been a few shows where they specifically told us like, do not like stage dive or touch the crowd or anything like that. Yeah, my wife tells me the same thing, and, and not even in concert, just at home in the bedroom. No stage diving, no touching. <laughs> no touching. Yeah, <laughs> that's what marriage is. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Right. Damn. 
uh, I've been married for uh, like 42 years now to her mother. Yeah. Not looking for any. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we solved yeah. your mystery. We are now new fans of Jinx. We can't wait to come out and see you live. Thank you for taking part in this. And thank you. Uh, we're, uh, if you have a CD-ROM and, and you don't know how to read, um, go get uh, Howie uh, reading. I don't even know what it's called anymore. All right. <laughs> Thanks for what? having me, Howie. I'm glad plug we could put an end to this. Oh, mystery. and plug what? Plug our pod. Go ahead. Yeah, but yeah, like next when this comes out, I'll let my audience know, and I'll talk about this on the next Lost Media episode. So we got no, we solved one now. You solved it. This is like an unsolved mystery solved. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you got great hair, great music. I appreciate you. You're that, a great Howie. guy. I love the Jeep. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye. We also have. You're getting a phone call now. Who is that? You? Me? Is it Caroline? Who's calling? How do we answer this? Wait. It's you. I it's can me? see it. Oh. Yeah, open it. <laughs> Hello? Take off your headset. Hello? How do you not know how to use? My daughter's taking a call. We have another thing where, is that other guy there? <laughs> yes, he is. Okay, so let me just explain to the people. I do, um, I'm in show business and uh this is and and uh, there was a charity event. Do you do? Does Rich remember what the charity event was for? It was Comedy Gives Back. You're on the, you're on the board. Oh, I'm on the board of Comedy yeah. Gives Back, and where we <laughs> raised money, we did a huge fundraiser during COVID for comedians who no longer, because of COVID, and all the you know couldn't pay their rent, weren't pl getting booked in clubs because they were all closed. There's so many people that just want to make you laugh that have been stymied by COVID. So we did this fundraiser and one of the fundraisers was you could bid on a chance to be in the Howie Mandel Does Stuff um, podcast. Oh, so this, exciting. Don't, the guest is here. Oh. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> Sorry. And this is really exciting. This is the winner of uh, that. I mean, I just don't think I'm that exciting. No, You're no, exciting. no, that's not what you were saying. That, that, anyway. <laughs> no, that is what Welcome I, to our <laughs> podcast winner of the, what is your name? My name is Frankie. Hello. Hi, Frankie. Thanks for being part of Howie Mandel Does Stuff. This is my daughter, Jacqueline Schultz. Hi. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, and nice this is so you. nice of you to be supportive of uh, Comedy Gives Back. But now that Absolutely. you're on the podcast, what I'm doing is I'm going to take the next uh, five minutes and it's yours. Go ahead. Bye. <laughs> That's a joke, right? <laughs> He's not responding. <laughs> no, this is all yours. Go ahead. Was it worth it? Um, I mean, <laughs> do you want me to do a monologue? Do you want me to sing? Do you want me to ask you questions? Like, I got it all prepared. Just let me know. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Howie, you're killing me here. <laughs> Not, nothing? I don't get a, I don't get a directive. I don't get a, a prompt. Uh, you did. I'll do it one more time. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Go. It's all yours. Jacqueline, is your dad always like this? Yep. Enjoy. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay, well, I'll, I'll talk about myself first, I guess, because if, if you're not going to give me anything else. Uh, I'm from I'm from Canada. I'm in Toronto right now. Whoa, um, you know that's my hometown, right? I do know that, Howie. What and, part of and Toronto? you're a huge uh, role model and inspiration what, for what, me as someone what part of who Toronto? wants to do game shows. What, what, oh, is that what you want to do? You want to host game shows? That is the dream. Okay. Well, we'll talk even after this because I want to do game shows in Canada, launch, launch them in Canada, and then bring them out here to a worldwide audience. So maybe we'll work together even after this. He's but got quite a resume, by the way. I'm looking at this that Caroline gave me. You're a former Mr. World Canada and hosted Miss World. You're currently on Netflix, Netflix's Sing On, and you won $40,000. Sing? Are you yeah. a singer? Are you a singer? Yeah, you know, I do a lot. I, I have I have been a singer. Right now I'm focusing on, on TV hosting. I, I learned that doing too many things was a little bit complicated, so I'm trying to, like, narrow it down. But to just hosting? But yeah, sing, host, I do it all. Do you have a podcast? I don't have a podcast yet. Well, right now you're on a podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, <laughs> take it away. Go ahead. Howie. <laughs> um... <laughs> 
So yes, I, I love that. <laughs> Stop! This is so uncomfortable. I know, but I, it's it, it's I I love uh, meeting. I, how old are you, buddy? I just turned thirty. Okay, so I was around your age when I moved out here, and st- I started actually in my mid twenties. But you've been working for a long time. You know, I'm coming up there to do Canada's Got Talent. Okay, so I didn't. Are you allowed to say that, Howie? Because that has not been announced yet. No. No. <laughs> no, not allowed to say it. But I'm not okay, going to so- get in trouble. This is in your time. I'm not allowed. I'm. Not, I'm not allowed to uh, uh, say that. It has not been announced. How do you know okay. that I wasn't allowed to say it? Because I, I'm, you know, I'm in the industry here, and I'm, I'm trying to learn my way and find my way. And they haven't announced the judges or the hosts no, yet. No, they so. said don't announce. But maybe you could answer one question for me. I signed this thing. What does NDA stand for? <laughs> <laughs> I signed this one piece of paper. I yes. don't know what it stands for, but they had me sign it after they hired me to do Canada's Got Talent. And then they made me sign this NDA, and I'm not good with acronyms. So, uh, clearly, clearly. Uh, no detail uh, allowed. allowed. No details allowed? No that details allowed. Solid. Yes. yes. Wait, but I see here also that you sung for the Queen. I know you're trying to get away from singing, but I want to hear you sing. Okay, if you're good you enough want, to sing for the Queen. Elizabeth? A pop song is yes, Queen Elizabeth. A pop, any pop song, just go for it. Go yeah. for it. Okay. Uh, la, la, la. Baby, don't worry. You are my only, and you won't be lonely. Even if the sky is falling down, down, down. Baby, are you down, 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 down? Wow. Yay! Oh, if I. I, I feel like I'm cut off now. What happened? Oh, there I am. No, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, can I tell you something? If I had a golden buzzer, I'd give it to you right now. That was really, oh. really good. A cappella on the. There, I promise you, there was no plan for that. Now, let me ask you something. Why would you not pursue that versus I, like I haven't seen your hosting skills or whatever? Yeah. But that just seems like that's your. La- I mean, you're so good at it. Why would you give that up? You know, that, that means so much. I've, I've auditioned for singing projects my whole life. I sang in the, I was in the audience of X Factor USA when Simon was there. Uh, I got to perform, I got a standing ovation. Simon didn't hear me, but I met him after the show by luck, which I always thought was like this kind of meant to be moment. And uh, I don't know, I, I kept singing and I kept auditioning. I've auditioned for AGT, CGT, um, X Factor UK. I don't know, I, I, I have so many passions in life and whatever opportunity comes my way, I'm, I'm ready for it, Howie. So if you oh. need a singer or a host or a producer, just, no, let's go singer or host, then, then let me know. All right, but let me just tell you something, young man, don't give up ever. So you're saying you did all these and you got in front of Simon and you went to X Factor and you did this and see, but you also sang for the Queen. The problem is that you're not going to be a singer if you've just if you change directions. But you can yes. if you're going to host, just stay and keep trying to host. But as soon as you, you know, your your explanation to me sounded a little bit discouraging. I've tried for these, I tried for that, I didn't get on. So now I'm going to do. Now I'm passionate about this. The point is that I went through decades of. And even after I so-called, you know, started making a living and people started knowing me, I went through droughts like you wouldn't believe of people not wanting to hire mm-hmm. me, of performing in clubs where there were just five, six people showing up, of trying to get uh, parts on shows with five lines and under, under. But I still love stand-up and I still pursue stand-up. Stand-up to me is like singing to you. Uh, as much as I host yeah. shows and, and appear on things and do a podcast, I'm a comedian. Just like yeah. I, from the sound of your voice, you're uh, uh, a singer, and it would be a shame if you stopped doing that or didn't give yourself no, every opportunity. That means a lot. So you should try out for CGT again if you didn't, if you did, or maybe you signed one of those no uh, discos allowed or no whatever. Disc- <laughs> An NDA, the thing I signed, I where I'm going to be the host, uh, not the host. I'm one of the judges on Canada's Got Talent. I'm not allowed to talk about it. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I'm also not allowed, to, up in Canada, I'm also the face of Staples office supplies. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, Is that new? Huge, yeah, it's a huge campaign. It's huge. And, Great. And Bell Let's Talk. Don't you do that? Yeah, too? for mental health. Yeah. Yeah. What part of Toronto do you live in? Um, City Place. I've been here for one year. Okay. Near the CNE. Yeah, I know where City Place is. I was just in oh, Toronto okay. last week. 
because I'm the uh, uh, the voice of uh, Staples. <laughs> okay. Which is a huge campaign there. Everybody's talking about it, right? Absolutely. There, sold. That was good. <laughs> is there anything that you're doing right now that you want to plug? Um. Oh my gosh. No, I'm I'm auditioning. I'm. I was at Miss World Canada last night hosting that, and um, the won, Netflix who, show is who, still on. So if people want to see me sing on Netflix, it's Sing On Episode 7. And other than that, I'm just hustling, Howie, and it's it's so cool to meet you, and thank you for the advice. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And who won Miss World Canada? Uh, her name is Jamie. Jamie, she's a beautiful young woman, and I'm excited to, to follow her journey. So, like, she'll go to the Miss World. She'll be representing Canada. But who became, who like, was from every province? Miss, like, yes. was she Miss Saskatchewan? Was she Miss Manitoba? Was she Miss Mississauga? What was she before she became our representative for Miss World? I believe she was from Ontario. Miss Ontario. Wow. Wait, he won a car on Price is Right. You won a car? You're on everything. I, and he's also been on Let's Make a Deal and Canada's Smartest Person. <laughs> And our podcast. Yeah, you're on everything. You and get you're around. only 30? You're I'm a busy fella. I just turned 30, and yes, I'm a busy guy. I, I try to put myself out there in just any way that I can. And, and I, again, I love game shows. Like, that's where the TV hosting thing comes in. I've watched them since I was a kid. So I love being on them, and I, I want to host one one day as well. I just hosted a new game show for Netflix. I'm not allowed to talk about it. I signed a thing. <laughs> <laughs> when does it come out? I'm very excited. I think in April. I've got a brand new, okay. a brand new game show. I'm not allowed to speak about on Netflix <laughs> with exciting. me hosting. <laughs> but I love hosting. You know what? I fought hosting game shows for the life of me. In 2004, I thought it was the lowest rung in the totem pole of show business. And my wife talked me into doing Deal or No Deal. And it's the best thing I've ever, I have ever done. And uh, it kind of gave me the, it gave me the most success I've ever had, and I enjoy yeah. it. So I get what you want to do. You should you should host like a singing competition, game show. I, I yes, I mean again, I ideally yes. <laughs> well, that is great. Anyway, uh, hopefully I get to work with you again in the future. You, I, I would imagine even without w working with me, you've got a, a bright future ahead of you. I can't thank you enough for being part of uh, Comedy Gives Back. I can't thank you enough for your talent and your singing and everything. And you've uh, made this episode after you. You are, the, you are opening for Bob Saget. Bob Saget is on his way in now. Were you a full, Very cool. Were you a full House fan? Yes. I, yes. When I was young, I watched Full House and then... Um, Oh my gosh, America's Funniest Videos. Right. Right? Right, you're right. correct. <laughs> um, do you have a question for Bob that I can ask him on your behalf? Oh my gosh. Um, you could say no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll pa pass. Pass. <laughs> pass on the question. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I think when Bob comes in, we're not gonna we're not gonna ask him any questions or even really talk to him. He's gonna sit down, and I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one. You go. <laughs> Same thing here. Yeah. That's how I'm I work. That's my thing. I'm respond to that because that was uh, not what I expected this to start with. But I hope I handled myself all right. You handled yourself great. You're like a seasoned pro when it comes to broadcasting and being on the air. You were not thrown off, and not that that's what I was trying to do. I just don't have a plan. See, unlike you, I spend no time in preparing. Uh, I'll got be it. honest, I didn't even know you were on today. And then Caroline just said, oh, we got uh, somebody uh, from uh, Comedy Gives Back. I go, okay. And so we've solved a mystery. Mm -hmm. We've uh, found new talent mm -hmm. that hopefully we get to work with in the future. And uh, just stay healthy. And maybe I'll see you at uh, Canada's Got Talent. And even yeah. send your tape into America's Got Talent. I'm going to do that. I'm allowed to talk about America's Got Talent. Not allowed to talk about Canada's Got Talent or my Netflix show. Not allowed to talk about either of those. They so didn't I release who's on America's Got Talent next season either. Yet. That's because they're doing America's Got Talent Extreme right now. Without me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I the comments. I know. Yeah. Well, apparently I'm You've hard to work with. You've been replaced by Nikki Bella. Nikki, Nikki Bella. Bella. Yeah. I was going to say, Nikki Bella, check your spot. He, she yeah. did. And you know what? I, I've always, you know, tried to uh, reach that level, uh, but I've never been able to do that. So they went for the real thing. Get me a Nikki Bella type, and then they would get me because they weren't going <laughs> to pay that kind of money 
for Nikki. So I'm glad to see Nikki's doing it and also the motocross guy. What's his name? Yeah, I don't. I don't. What's his name, the guy that's doing the extreme? I don't know. Do you like, guys know? Extreme sports. But Terry like. Crews and Simon are going to be on it. It'll be great. It'll be like they're shooting it in Georgia now where they're blowing things up. As and long as Simon track. doesn't get on any of the bikes or anything, it'll be Yeah, he, he can hurt himself. Yeah. Balance is not yeah. his strong suit. All right. Well, thank you and good night. <laughs> good luck with your dad. It's so cool. Good you luck guys with your together. dad. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I need it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank right. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that was fun. I'm, I am so hot. Well, let the let the viewers and the listeners be a judge of that. You can take that off. How do I leave? How do I leave? You don't want to leave? Are you sure you want to leave? leave? <laughs> How do I leave? I, that's what I love about Zoom. You want to take that off? Yeah. Go you ahead. Put, you had me put Go it on, but camera. you didn't even mention it. No, I have clothes underneath. I know. I had. I, I said put this on like I was going to mention it. How? Uh, you don't have to do that. I have clothes underneath. There. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's like that quick change artist that we had on AGT. Yeah, and my So that was a thing. I just did Ellen yesterday. You know what she informed me of? Uh, and it'll be on, on uh, I don't know, be on after this airs. Anyway, the, 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 she informed me on the show, if you saw it a couple days ago, that I am the most frequent guest that she's ever had on her entire existence of the show. You already knew that. Hmm? You already knew that. Why are you taking the wind out of my sail? I'm <laughs> sorry. I already knew. Yeah, that's like a that's a thing. But that, that could change tomorrow, right? Because somebody can come on in this last year in like three or four times. No but one I've been, says yes as much as you say yes and has as much free time, apparently. <laughs> 40, how many times have you been on? Oh, I, I'm on to something else because Caroline put notes up on the left. So <laughs> it pulled my attention. It pulled my focus. No, 42. You're pretty close. Oh, I was close. Pretty close. Uh, the, the next... Uh, talk show that I've done the most was The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, which I did 22 times. Didn't you do Jay a lot, Jay Leno? Oh, I, I must have done Jay more than that. Yeah, you did Jay Leno How many a lot. times? Oh, I probably did Jay more than 42 times. And I also remember going to Arsenio Hall tons oh, you're right. of times. You're right. I've been on a lot of yeah. things. <laughs> and I've been on just about every episode of this podcast. Almost. But I don't think we're up to 40 yet. No. Okay, so now I'm going to tell people, before Bob gets here, I'm going to tell people that if you have things that you want to submit... If you want to submit an idea for me or Jackie, Jacqueline, what do you want to be called? Well, my friends and family call me Jackie, like you call me Jackie. Right. But all of my social media is Jacqueline Schultz because I couldn't get Jackie. It was taken. So. Jackie Schultz was taken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there a Jackie Schultz? Yeah. So let's now, try to can we get a number on her or him or whatever it is and let's ask to get my daughter's name back so maybe we can get them all live my on social here. media is Jacqueline so therefore I tell everyone now to call me Jacqueline I okay so it. here's what they told me if you go to howiemandel.com howie man you could submit a note that I'll read on the air an idea that maybe I'll do on the air. Maybe you do something funny and create a video that you want to share with us on the podcast. Go to HowieMandel.com. Do you think I, I slash asked, contact? <laughs> you didn't write Just that. HowieMandel.com. Okay. Before we went on the air, my <laughs> son, who's also a producer here, him and I had a fight. You know that? You I know? heard. Did you hear? Rich kind of told me. Yeah. He, he like lets me know before I come in every time he's like whether or not you're in a good mood. Like, to well, that's not. Me. Well, that's not. <laughs> wait, now you're <laughs> making it seem like I'm a scary guy to be around if I'm not in a bad mood. But we so did have a fight. So it depends who you talk to. Sometimes you are. I said, how come I've never, we've been doing this for months, and how come I've never received a letter or a video or something from a, a viewer or a listener? He goes, because you never mentioned where to take it. So I said, I think I have. So now I did. So now I did. HowieMandel.com. What? Now you did. So and we're good. I love you, you're Alex. Good. You're I love good. you. I love you, Alex. <laughs> Alex, I love you. I, I, I know. I, I love you too. You feel guilty for getting mad at him, huh? <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think he got mad at me. I think I got mad at him. He oh. did. He told me off. That's the mood that he's warning you about. <laughs> Alex's mood, not my mood. There's Jackie. There's Schultz. Jackie Schultz. Eight followers. Yes. Twenty-four posts. Her last <laughs> post was in 2012. We gotta get the. How do we get her number? How do we get in contact? Seth's really good at that, right? You? you can message her. Seth. But it doesn't no, seem she like hasn't she posted since 2012. <laughs> it's not like she's gonna check her DMs. You know, I hope she's okay. One like, and it's like she was leaving the dinner table. It was the last. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. There's a blurry shot of uh, some uh, silverware. 
on a table. It's like she was going to take a shot like food porn and then went, fuck, no. Well, we can't say fuck the C word. I'm sorry. No. And then. And then Cunt, no. What? Cunt, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can say it. I can't. Okay. But I mean, I couldn't get Jackie Schultz on TikTok, on Facebook. That's not how you spell your name, though. Yeah, you is. should be able to. No, that's S H U L T Z. That is how I spell my name. What? <laughs> that is how I spell my name. It's not. I don't S- have a C. <laughs> Why didn't you ever tell me? I've been writing your name wrong forever. <laughs> it, that's how I spell my name. Have S-H- you seen me write it with the C? Yes. <laughs> Why have you never corrected me till now? I don't know. You can say, Papa, this is not my name. Why did you not say that at one point? I don't know. We have free time where you can come up to me and go, Papa. You also always Papa, write you don't Riley's know my... last name wrong. I don't know how to spell her last name either. <laughs> yeah. She's got incredibly funny. Your sister has incredible. The best TikToks. Yeah, I mean, Wait, before we I um, play go on of... to her TikTok, though. Okay, go ahead. Can I ask you if you saw the Couch Guys TikTok? I don't really get that one. It's about the guy who looks like he's with his girlfriend when his girlfriend walks in. What? You're you are always saying. like, you know what? I should submit content that I want to talk about on HowieMandel.com slash submit or whatever. Yeah. Just no so slash, no sl- what? Slash what? Then what? You, it's in HowieMandel.com. Okay. Then he'll talk about it. Though. I know, but I need to submit all the stuff that we're going to talk about it so that mm. he'll actually talk about it. Every time I plan something and I go to start talking about it, he's like, I don't really get that. Never mind. No, you could talk about it. Go ahead. I don't get it. I saw it and I don't get it. I didn't even think it was that good. But you're the only one on TikTok then that's not like. Well, if you agree with me, go to (laughs) (laughs) HowieMantel.com. The couch guy is a video of Mm -hmm. someone. He's sitting and he's uh, too close to a. a, Well, he is. We don't think he's too close. He's just sitting with a woman, right? And then his girlfriend comes in. I guess she surprised him, right? Uh huh. And he was with another girl. And there's, again, conspiracy theories. Did he get up too slow? Did he act like... No, his phone is the conspiracy theory, number one, that the girl had his phone and that she was sitting really close and that he wasn't excited to see her. Um, he's off it. He's no, I'm anything. listening. I can listen and look at the same time. Okay. So now everyone's arguing. The girl in the sky is saying there's nothing there. There's no conspiracy. We're in love. And then everyone's saying, no, like you need to get a new boyfriend. And has she answered to this yet? Yeah. She's you want to play it? Is it? You got it on play. Go ahead, play it. <laughs> Girls walking in, surprising my boyfriend at college. So, can I say something? To me, this looks like absolutely nothing that the internet is making into something. So, the girl hands the guy his, his phone. phone. She had so his she phone. So, she had his phone. And he's so, sitting on a couch with, like, three other girls. And she does a scoot twice. Yes. She does two scoots. She was really close to him. Yeah. Okay, I didn't understand the scoot, <laughs> the scoot theory. And the phone. So she had his phone for a minute. She hands him the phone. What, so I can't hand another person who happens to be a female my phone? It was I wouldn't do that for a German. He to did him. it. He did it really like sly, awkward. Like he went and she. No, split he's it focusing in. on the girl walking in the door. No. No, you're, that's nothing. There's nothing, people. There's nothing here. You're making something out of nothing. But now it's a trend, though. Like people are reenacting it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But I don't. I don't. I don't. I think when people do this, that's going to be the end of their relationship. You know, it's going to be at the end of the relationship. The comments that you guys are all making. No, she says they're fine, and he says they're fine too. And it's bullshit too. The, the, <laughs> because, no, because they don't want to play it out publicly. There was nothing there. Somebody was trying to capture a really nice surprise moment, a reunion, and then everybody is uh, become uh, uh, like an internet snoop. Look how. Look how slowly he, oh, that's two, not one scooch, two scooches she went over. This is, there's no relationship. Oh, 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 she was holding his phone. She was holding his phone. He got up and gave her a big hug. And you know what you're going to find out? The girl that was scooched holding his phone is his cousin. That's my theory. It no, was his cousin. They're at co- no. You it's- can't go to cousin. You're right. You can't go to college with your cousin. <laughs> Doesn't happen. No. Does not happen. Whatever, dad. You're wrong. Surprising my boyfriend at college. I bet you they're more surprised than you are that people picked up on this. Oh, there. There's Bob. 
I hear Bob talking. Play he's on the outside. Rileys? What? Want to play one of Riley's? I could do that, but he's just walking in. Oh, hi. He's walking in. This is Mr. Bob Saget, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. What? Are you live? No. Oh, good. What? <laughs> Are you going to say a lot of shit that you're going to call me after and go, please? Nothing. Everything's usable. Every part of the cow must be used. We have the same mask. Watch, watch his heat. It's falling over. I know. This thing was suction cupped. We, yeah, the masks are the best. The, but the, the KN95s. Yeah. And we're supposed to have the 95s. What's the difference between KN? I think the 95 is what you take if you're going from New York to North Carolina. <laughs> 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 I love seeing you do this together. Yeah. I've watched it and listened to it, but I haven't seen you two together. It's the cutest thing I ever it's saw. It's the best thing to be honest Thank with you. you. All to, to get mushy for a minute. This is my favorite thing to do because, and that's my son. No, oh, right here. I know at him. your camera. How are you? That's yeah. my camera. But I can't. How can I? I got a bad seat. Do you need a better seat? Are those bad seats? There's no bad seat here. <laughs> you you want to? She, like, she, she, she wants you to uh, read. Do you know what you're sitting on? Some guy said that to me in prison once. <laughs> <laughs> so all I can do is takes to this camera. Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to look at you, so it's going to be a profile. Yeah, right. Of a, of a but I am head. recording. I'm, I am like have a, a, a photographic memory, so I'm going to just reenact. <laughs> you got it. You have to see his expression when he said that. But you know what you're sitting on? She uh, makes fun of me. That's why she wears that shirt. Oh, these are important seats from a theater that's major? Yeah, right, there's the plaque right there. <laughs> it's upside down. It's the uh, front row. Whoa, front row of the Tonight Show. Johnny Carson, yeah. Johnny. Yeah. So you have been, you've performed in front of these seats rather than sat in them. I, I did. And yeah. I saw the people that sat in them and they were bedraggled. Have you cleaned these? Nope. Oh, my. So do you know what you're sitting on? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Miller. <laughs> That's Merv Griffin. I'm sitting on Merv Griffin. That was uh, Danny Terrio. <laughs> That's trouble. I just caused trouble. No, you didn't. No, I have you a didn't. question. I just watched you on um, on Instagram, and you're with Jason Sudeikis. But is that not with Jason? Is that a thing where Jason's the back plate, and you're talking to him in front of him? That he that you <laughs> duet with him? Is that a duet, or is that from no. you with Jason? I was with Jason. That's the you know when when there was when you and I started out, and we'll talk about that. When we, when you and I started out, somebody say you know I saw you with Bob Saget or walked in the club, but now you kids with all this digital. I post a picture you of me. Kids, he's the one that. No, asks. he's including me. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about he's he's asking the questions I do. You um, kids, like I take a picture of myself with somebody, and then goes, "Is that real or was that a filter?" But you have that... been doing a lot of duets, but and you have been doing a lot of stuff where it's green screen. You're really yeah, good at it. Thank you. I'm Who not that good at you. Like deep the, fakes? Your son. Um, I don't know that he would take any credit for because he thinks what I post is kind of shitty. The, Alex, I don't do a good job, do I? Better than what I do. Yeah. I mean, you're no, you're just <laughs> no, great. What, Alex? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I think yeah. your content's good. Just sometimes it belongs on your story when it could go away in twenty. That's what like I haven't figured out. Yeah. When do you put it on the story, and when do you just? And when is it reels? And when is it uh, Snapchat? Right. And when is it a Twitter thing? Well, Snapchat. You spend time on Snapchat? No, no. I'm on MySpace. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm on I'm on MySpace, and I'm on you are? Napster. No. Napster. Yeah. Friendster. Friendster, and I'm on Floppy. The, the thing about <laughs> that's a disc. Oh, okay. No, well, that's your <laughs> daughter. We can't go there. Yeah, you can. She's she's an adult. She's had her own children. I'm sorry, it's your daughter. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I've been told. Well, Do you remember no, the we first were time here we when met? we were talking about threesomes last a uh, couple weeks ago. Thrinder. Thrinder. Yeah. yeah. Thrubbles. Thrupples. Is Thrinder an app? It was. Oh. You know Brad Williams? The I do. I do. So that's how he met his wife, on Thrinder. And the third didn't show. <laughs> so oh. he married the one that showed. Oh. And he has an imaginary third. <laughs> He's adorable. He is. And they yeah. ha and he has a child well, that, now. Is, is that... This, I can't say it. It's gonna There's nothing rude. you can't say. Okay. Is, is that a threesome or is that a two and a halfsome? <laughs> can't can, say that. Yeah, you can. He, uh, Brad, he said, Brad allows that. Brad does allow that. He's what okay. did he say? He was the Leaning Tower of Pisa, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's when he, in a threesome he was the. It was yeah, always he's, off he's, to the <laughs> edge. We depicted it on on the episode with Brad Williams. You look at it, and the lovely Jeremy, who is also a producer and editor, and also a, an amazing graphic guy and animator. So he created a sexual, an animated sexual diagram of Brad Williams. Uh, uh, fucking audience members. No. Yeah. Audience members. <laughs> well, that's where they were, right? He talked about the oh, audience yeah, yeah, members yeah. came. It he, was now, you use that word as a verb with your daughter. Does it make you uncomfortable or does it make you uncomfortable? No, we're Without that not... word, she would not be here. True. 
Yeah. What true. did we say today? We're not using the word. No, fuck. we didn't want to use the f word. So we I, for today. I, I'm not using it. Your C daughter word. is here. The c word. Charge it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a c. By the way, you got a smart son. He's technical. Why is the guest camera over there if I'm looking at you? Okay, I mean, Alex. Has he not Alex, seen like I mean Howard Stern, the camera would be right there. Yeah, Alex. Why is not the camera here, Alex? Uh, why is we, not? We actually didn't originally set up the cameras. Uh, someone else did. We oh, so that's it. You inherited the cameras. the cameras from another setup. We, no, but why would? <laughs> but wait, wait, Alex. Why didn't you move it when you inherited it? Would you like me to move it right now? Yeah, I think Bob would. I would love okay. it. Yeah, then you go ahead. Shot. It's like Spielberg shows up and goes, I, the cameras were here. I can't move them. Yeah, get in here, Alex, and set it up. We can have well, the whole it's, move. It's, it's about the, the cables that were set up. We didn't really have the reach for them. But we, you, that's just an excuse. I don't well, go to Radio to Shack and get a cable. Well, if, I see Radio you don't have a Shack. cable. I see some of these cables are very cheaply bought. They are they're thin cables. They were here from other people. Oh, so what was here? Was it a strip club? This room? Yeah. <laughs> this was the back room? I don't know. This was, uh, what, what did we do with this? What was here? Why? Here he is. Alex is going to. Alex, do you think you have the cable oh, length? There's... Oh, there's uh, there's Brad Williams in oh. his uh, threesome with the uh, the other Eiffel Towers are uh, depictions of the audience members. He met a, a woman in the audience, or he met a guy in the audience and said, would you like to come home and do my wife with me? That's so gross. I could never do that. No, no. With him. And then he taught me another term, the paintbrush. Which is? Do you know what that is? I know it's going to be something dirty. Well, it is. He, is it because like a, of his height. Is it the mustache kind of thing? Where, well, the dirty Sanchez? Yeah, just that. No, 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 but this was an accident. Do you get dirtier when your daughter's around? <laughs> <laughs> I think you were trying to prove a point that you're one of us. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. But you brought up Brad, and this is I what did. he what was to explain well, to Bob to what bring, the paintbrush was. We have to bring Brad so up. The, <laughs> <laughs> so he said because of his height, when he didn't communicate, well with the other man and they were going around to switch sides orifices yeah they went on the same direction and he got swiped like a paintbrush, like a paintbrush across the face across with that's face. your daughter saying this yeah. <laughs> my daughter's almost 40 uh, he's 30 about no, to be 37 maybe on the freeway but this is a, a young woman you yeah. were about to say before i made ever met, caused a ruckus and made your son go through a midlife crisis <laughs> <laughs> trying to move a camera, but we'll, we'll, whatever. <laughs> now it's unplugged, so you're not even going to be on camera for about 20 minutes. That's great. What? It has batteries. I've oh, always okay. wanted to do an unplugged special. Yeah. So how That's you were funny. about to say to do Bob unplugged. Saget unplugged, but it's in the dark. It, it just a, an hour <laughs> of darkness. And it's going, <laughs> we got Where's the, the fucking plug? We got the generator. <laughs> so you were going to say how we met. Here. You were going to say when we met. To yeah. your daughter and your son, who were in the room yeah. where it happened, yeah. uh, and it was a long time ago. I love that you're comparing us getting together, like to play Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you were playing a bagel. I was playing a bagel deli. <laughs> Look what you've done! I ruined the world. <laughs> Look at him! Look how strong he got. <laughs> He wasn't We've just, had a guest on every. This is uh, my God. This is the 40th what? episode. This is it. This and, is our 40th. Well, this episode. will be the subheading, <laughs> and Bob Saget rearranges the camera. That will be Wait, the ending. Deal or no deal, Alex? This, look where you are. Do you want the briefcase with coke in it, or do you want? Oh, Jesle, wow. You know what? This is this better. is going to help this you. This is with, better because Jeselnik said he couldn't even see the cameras. Right. Before. This is going to help you with the, you what it. they call guests. <laughs> <laughs> this is because a guest doesn't want the, uh, we had a lot of cameras i just didn't know where to aim them well the, you, watch the zabruder film and don't do that <laughs> <laughs> look at the, the mess so i was that's fine i mean it's cables it's electronics okay I don't look know. at me not the camera i'm not i haven't looked at the camera <laughs> i know it was behind you but now it's going to be in front of you is, this do you have a problem is with he right profile? alex take him do you yeah. have a problem with your profile is there a reason why you? i have don't... a problem with many angles of my face yeah <laughs> <laughs> there aren't many that I love. I mean, I wish I could Photoshop my existence. First of all, I know this This is probably going to air in a, in a week or two, but I'm fascinated. I'm, I, I love you. I, lo I love you. you. You and I have some thing, and it's called my penis. But the thing, <laughs> no, sorry, I got confused. It's your penis. We um, share. <laughs> I have to ask you something. I know your daughter's here. Right. But I've known you forever. Um, I mean, since we were in our early 20s. Yes. You Did you always uh, shave your entire body Forget the, the head, because you weren't at the time. But the rest of you, were you shaving um, 
You could, why, are you, why is he making love to Bob's big boy? <laughs> that's my, you came in, didn't like the camera what angle. Is he doing? Now look at my son. Well, that's look actually com- what he's doing now. Is, that's comedy. That's actually comedy right now because I don't see him. I just see this thing moving. Upstaging everything. Wow, this has gone so smoothly. It's never gone better. <laughs> well, you're, you're Why are you the, crouching down? Like they're not now. They're not going to see you. <laughs> Could you go up on the roof and change the air system? <laughs> That's hysterical. All right. Well, uh, now the camera's where every other guest would want, but I bet my head is like... You're the only one they've ever seen. This is episode 40. This is the first time (laughs) they've seen the face of any of my guests. Go go, What was your question? I was just asking, did you shave your crotch back in the day? So you want to know something? When we started doing the show, we were working with another company, and now I'm not... I didn't like... um, at At that time, uh, we... And you do it. Do you read ads? Yeah, yeah. Manscaped you're talking about. Yes. Not to mention them by name. Right, <laughs> but this isn't even ad. We're talking about it. So Manscape is yeah. the which I do use groomage. It's and it's it's waterproof. But I had to read the ads with my daughter. <laughs> oh, that's upset. And she and say, an erectile dysfunction pill too. Yeah, it was also spot. That's why I said I can't do this anymore. <laughs> erectile and, dysfunction. I I don't think uh, I don't know what it is. I've heard about it. I don't believe you. Oh, uh, what I have is a cardboard cutout of uh, my penis. If it's fine. Uh, and so I, I just put it right in front like a flashcard. <laughs> so your Do you daughter's know here, for God's sakes. Is, that, is it making you uncomfortable? Uh, actually, a tiny bit. My, my daughters, if they were They're the here, same age. Yeah. How old are you now? 37. What? Mm-hmm. You look 21. Thank no, you. she has two kids. Thanks. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. So now you could say fuck. I think I'm like the same age as your wife. <laughs> no, my wife is much older, but thanks really? for the attack. Um, <laughs> you're I'm lucky just your kidding, parents stay do... together. Your wife, your wife is your mother. Your wife, that's the story my of wife. how I met your wife. Um, yeah, your parents stayed together, which is uh, not, it, people would love it. I wish it could have happened back in the day with right. my ex, right. but it didn't work out. Once and, you're and married it, for more than 20 years, there's no such thing as consensual sex anymore. No, no. You're, you're saying it's it's forced. <laughs> I'm trying. It's Whatever I can it's do. It's really begging. It's, yeah, it's begging. No, it's not. It's really on uh, their terms. See, now I'm, co- I'm uncomfortable talking about sex with her mother. I think you should be. Okay. And I'm sorry I brought that up. It's all right. But, but you I, can talk to her. But I am saying that people do give me uh, a shit sometimes because my wife is younger than me, but who isn't younger than me? Right. But, um, you know, I'm 65 and uh, she is 42. But I've always had that age spread uh, because I went out with someone before I met her that was about 60 that was closer to my age. And she was like smoking cigarettes and saying, are you going to have kids again? You know, (laughs) thank you, Penguin from Batman. We have no problem with going out. Uh, Rich is here, who's one of our producers. (laughs) Right. Do you know how old his uh, significant other is? I would say 19. (laughs) <laughs> you know, because you're saying that because she's tall for her age. She's very, very uh, thin and tall. <laughs> yes. And lovely. He's been going out with her since she was this tall. <laughs> you know you're in a, in a relationship with somebody young when you, they, they grow throughout the relationship. When you have the measuring stick on the wall when they come over. But that's not it's a It's our big, fourth date. You've grown an inch. But you're not. A, that's not a big age spread. No, for, it's not. I actually didn't know her age. I was just she thinking, looks I watched beautiful her and you take an attack at me because <laughs> yes. you look so young. Well, You truly you. look 21. 22 years old Thank but you. also i saw you at that age also over the years i've seen both of you kids at there's the another age. one there's another daughter who and also married and looks young too do you like her as much probably not because she's not on the show not as much right are you close with your sister yes good but he, i'm a favorite that's nice that yeah. you believe really that. yeah <laughs> 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 no, I was going to say the reason I don't know your wife's age, but I watch you guys on TikTok. Yeah, that's watch her fault. Her TikTok, <laughs> it, they're hilarious. She's awesome. She's really good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she's really really cool. And, and your life was, on 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 social media is great. Like even yeah, last but night, the real one, <laughs> the real one. No. Last night you had dinner with fucking. Norman Lear. I did, that, th- and he's I, a, my he's my friend. I, he I know he's your friend. I see on you the way have a, here. You have a cigar. We club. have a cigar night. That'll be Wednesday. Uh, he actually, well, a week from well, ago, according to when this runs, because I like to stay current. Yeah, as I sit in the Tonight Show seat. <laughs> 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 but he Facetimed me on the way here, and I just want to thank you for last night. And I I love you. He always says I love you, Bob, and I don't give a fuck who knows it. He's a ninety nine year old 
genius. He's a 99 year old genius that is, uh, you know, I think uh, kind of shaped television as we know it, shaped the sitcom as change we to change culture. I mean, it was a huge influence because every, you know, at all that in time, the for those that don't know, all in the family, uh, the Jeffersons, uh, Sanford and Son, Sanford good, good times. Um, all of those are his out of his one mind. One day at a time. And he's still producing shows today. He's got three shows. They're doing a. He's 99. They're doing an animated version of Good Times. Um, they are? They are. Oh, that's a great idea. He's got two Is that for shows. Netflix? He's doing. I don't know, and I was asking him about it last night, but then we got sidetracked. He's also doing Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, which he did originally. Wow. And that is with, oh, uh, God, she's so good. Emily Hampshire uh, from Schitt's Creek. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, it's just, he is, a, and his wife, Lynn, they, they are just. How do you connect with somebody like Norman? Like, what, how did you? He, he, 10 years ago, he called me, and I met him over the years. Our kids went to the same school. And, and his kids were, you want to talk about an age difference, you know, he has so many children from uh, different marriages. He's 99. He's got a 75-year-old so kid, and he's got a, 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 I guess in their 20s, twins. Um, and and wow. there he is the most loving, one of the more important people anybody could know if, they're in, if he's in their life, you know. Right. And he, um, it was just his uh, capacity for, love and his bandwidth for trying to help humanity you know he's got the norman lear center where he's really trying i mean we're here you're here to you know give your daughter some time and give her the delusion that she's her, your favorite <laughs> uh, but he also he he's such a wonderful and doesn't push his message down your throat or anything but he called me 10 years ago and said i'm calling you bob and i don't remember why but i want to see you i want you to come over and out of that nowhere. It, out of nowhere. Wow. And I went over, and we've been uh, friends ever since. And it's just, we eat the same things. We order the same stuff. We get told you can't have that by the same people. <laughs> you know, don't eat that, you know. You, For health reasons? Yeah, you just don't, don't get a steak every day, you know. <laughs> right. The, the normal thing. Are you a vegan? No. Why would you ask that? I don't know. I, there's other things I could have asked. <laughs> I'm a Jew, but I'm not a vegan. You, you, you don't a, eat real, red meat. Yes, I do. What are you talking about? Wait, I thought you didn't eat red meat. <laughs> you said you were my favorite, and you don't even know what the... <laughs> so interesting. She's you you she doesn't even care about you. She doesn't know anything Not about a shit. You. It's all no, about her. Didn't. As long as I'm the favorite, she doesn't have to know anything and about And you me. don't like mashed potatoes. I hate mashed potatoes. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I understand that. I like them sometimes if I... Like, I had oral surgery last week, which meant the dentist mounted my head. Um, and you blew the dentist. I had to because I, you know, I didn't. I forgot my insurance card. Right. Um, and you know, I I needed a cavity filled. And boy, did he do boy, that! Oh God, <laughs> it was a root canal. But he um, uh, had to cut a thing out of my mouth because we're, from wearing masks um, all the time. If you're eating, uh, I was on an airplane uh, with people, and my wife always says, "Don't uh, try to eat separately." off the same schedule, different than the schedule of everybody else getting served, because that's when the intake outtake of, of germs. When the least spread. masks are off their face. Correct. Okay. So say they're masked. Right. And then you're not, so you get your right. food delayed, or you know, you don't want it early, you look right. like a jerk. But I know, once you've landed and you're at the gate, everybody's <laughs> deplaning, you go, wait, I just want to eat this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, when I get off a plane and there's people have been on it, I, they, they have the gallon jug of the Purell, I just drink that. <laughs> I just go up that and then it just runs out my butt so you you do so i actually um i bit my lip and then a saliva thing hardened in my lip and you can't ever get rid of it i said you can't just inject it or something what, what wait, is wait, wait 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 exactly a saliva thing hardened saliva you got hardened saliva that doesn't turn you on i cannot more. wait to see jeremy's depiction of bob <laughs> saget with a giant hardened saliva inside this lip just so you can animate it properly it was gross and he said i'm <laughs> cutting it out Cut it out, and I thought he was. Hey, doing we were just talking about Dave that. Dave Coulier. That Full Dave House. Coulier. Aww. I said that day she was going. I said Bob's here, and she did cut it out. And I said, and and uh, she said that's the Olsen twins. I go, no, that's no, Coulier. That everybody's was misquoted everything on everything. <laughs> Everybody just makes up. But that was from his act. That was from his act. Cut it out. Right. And uh, but it was on the show too. Yes, it was. Yeah. It went from right from his act into yeah. the show. You know Sometimes I, that happens. You know what? <laughs> you know what I did want to ask you because I think you two are similar in the sense where you were doing a very family-friendly 
show, and you guys are both very dirty, filthy comedians. Well, we're not. I don't think we're dirty, filthy. I think we're earnest and fun, and we don't care. About, we don't we're, edit. We're we're right. It's we're, not the same audience though. That's watching. It is now. For when I go to stand up now, it's the people that watch. It can't be the kids, right? But it it's their parents that grew up watching Full House that understand me now. It only took me 40 years, but right. Uh, but and no. you were doing that before Full House. I was doing it not as blue, but near the right before I got Full House, I had done more blue stuff before I hit 30 years old when I got Full House. So I from 26 to 30, I was dropping more f bombs. I was out touring more, and uh, and then once I got the show, and then I would go do stand up with America's Funny Some Videos and Full House on the air, and they couldn't figure out what the hell was going well, on. Well, that even happens to me now, you right. know, with AGT, mm -hmm. you know, which is a good- I'm sorry you have that. Is there a cure? <laughs> That's like a, how do you get an AGT? You get it from uh, AFV. <laughs> we both had that. We had that. Those are our STDs. I had AFHV, because it was America's Funniest Home Videos, and then oh, they took wow. out the H. And then it became AFV. So it all sounds like it's something you gotta send to the CDC. Yeah. I identify as somebody from AGT. <laughs> so, but I'll go do my shows, like maybe in a casino or something, and there's always somebody walking out, holding the hand of a little kid, going, What is this? What is this? Right. You're not like this on TV. Yeah. You know, and I feel bad. I apologize. I go, But, you know, I've been doing stand up for 42 years, That's I've been doing AGT for nine you know i get it in our it's funny you're talking about talking with my around my daughter like that right. in our house she wasn't even allowed to say shut up right we were very respectful in the yeah. house but now you're an adult and you can hear who stopped her from saying shut up you or terry no he was the disciplinarian he was really strict wow isn't that amazing i don't even see you that way i know but you're not my daughter <laughs> Dude, i want to be you know we had a no, heart you don't. no 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 i had Did a you hit her no no Did but you i had beat a, her uh, <laughs> mentally, she she uh, was a really rough kid. From we've talked about that before, but you were really rough from fourteen to twenty one. It was horrible. That can happen. And I thought I was going to die. Right. And I'm not. You have daughters, right? I have three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Thirty four, thirty one, twenty eight. Were they hard? Uh, a couple of them through times, and they've also had their own difficulties that they've they've understood, and uh, you know, therapy helps. Yeah. Uh, helped me. She's still in it. It's uh, I, I don't see a reason to get out of it unless you feel like I don't need it right now. It's good to figure out and process your life is what I think, especially if your dad uh, was very a hard disciplinarian. And yet for the rest of the world, he was being silly and adorable. Yeah, yeah but my <laughs> my persona home, was uh, ogre. Was I an ogre? <laughs> yeah, at times. <laughs> Well, you would lie. You know, I oh, you would lie. <laughs> no, but I didn't lie. That was the problem. I should have lied more. I told you everything. Yeah. Wait a minute. It was hard. Oh, but she told you, oh, she said what you said. What no, you like uh, I went into her room and I found a, a bottle, a half dr drunken bottle of gin. I've, I've, I've done that before. So I pulled it in out. In my own room. <laughs> yeah. But what was your answer when I went, Jackie, it, what is this? I said, it's not mine. I only drink vodka. So she's then you 14. go, how did it get there? No, no but the fact that, that she's, uh, where I finished all my bottles and I threw them out. She drank her vodka. She was drunk. You know, or she went and got. But it uh, wasn't vodka, so you were lying about the. Oh, booze? she had friends over. People were sneaking right, in so and out of the house. That's what I'm saying was she wasn't lying. It was another person's booze. But what I could have just. Taken? I could have just stopped. Well, well, I'm interested because I've had this issue when my when one of my daughters was 16. She had a bunch of friends sleep over, and that was, um, you know. Uh, they always say nothing good happens after midnight. Uh, so I would say, okay, you guys could stay here. You'll be at my house. And we were, I, I, we were divorced when she was seven. This particular daughter, and uh, the other ones were different ages. <laughs> That's nice. Makes divorce much more palatable. <laughs> but uh, but her friends were there, and they're up all night partying. I don't know what they were doing, and I wanted to stay out of it. I just was glad they were home. But um, yeah, you you find stuff. I one of my daughters had a party, and I I wasn't home. And it started to escalate. And then the next day I found bottles of booze and I found some condom wrappers. And I was like, what? Inside of my house? What? That was, uh, that was <laughs> I a know. Well, disturbing. welcome to the world. She was hanging out. They were my condom wrappers, by the way. Oh. I wasn't at the party. I was just upset. <laughs> you were at the side of the house listening. Uh, yeah. That you had to go purchase more. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I just get them free, yeah. you know, because I'm a... I'm, <laughs> a celebrity. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like it's a hair celebrity. club for men. I, I bought the company. <laughs> yeah, uh, but her, uh, we, uh, I was, it was 
horrible. I don't know what if I want to. Like she was hanging out with. There were three movies made about her time in school. Uh, one being the um, uh, what's the Justin Timberlake movie? Alpha Dog. Alpha Dog. She was hanging I was with. Gonna, those, Really? With I was going to go Mean Girls, but this no. Is, no, you're talking real. No, real. The kid was. She knows a lot of kids that were killed. Yeah. Um, she yeah. knows uh, the just bad, bad people. And I can't tell you how many times I walked into a party where she wasn't supposed to be and physically dragged her out. That's a good dad, though. Yeah, no, I appreciate it now. But, not right. but then you were furious. I hate it. I well, hate the, it. the thing is, she pierced her tongue at 15. By yes. yourself? No, but I said I did it by myself because I didn't want to get the piercing place in trouble. So he protected a piercing place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come here, she's you always got. How dare you got piss her And you know, it was her mom was really upset, and she had asked whether she could have her tongue pierced before, and yeah, and her mom had said no. I didn't. It, it, it didn't bother me as much. I had my own piercings and I had earrings. And right, right, right. Every time my kids that's the hypocritical part, but you didn't have your tongue pierced. No, but she uh, was talking to us one night and we heard this horrible clicking. And, you know, so then she opened her mouth and we saw that. And uh, what, you know, then we and I tried. And it was a pot leaf on my tongue, the tongue piercing. Yeah, it was a pot Was leaf. it pinned down by the by the piercing? It was, a, it was like the, a ball and inside the ball was a picture of a, a pot leaf, a marijuana yeah. leaf. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. For your 15-year-old little girl comes home and goes, hi, dad. And it was a little click on her teeth from right. Her. So um, <laughs> she could have been a percussionist, <laughs> an oral percussionist. So I said, you know, listen, you asked your mother. Your mother said no. She goes, it's my body. I can do what I want. And well, I said, that, you can. Yeah, you can. And then I said, uh, you know, uh, well, you know, it's our house. We can do what we want. And you seem to be uh, we're, we're giving you gifts. You know, you, she drove a car. She had a car. At 15, she got a car that she was learning to drive on. She just turned 16 when this happened. Yeah. So she was driving, and I go, I can't reward you for this kind of behavior. So uh, I'm not, it is your body, but you don't have a car anymore. She goes, well, how am I going to get places? I said, I will drive you everywhere. So for, uh, I said, and at such time that you decide you want to listen to me and take it out, I'll give you back the keys. So for six months, every morning, I got up and drove her to school, drove her to parties, and it was the most annoying. She would blast the worst fucking music I've ever heard in my life and sing along. And I will say this, uh, singing is not her strong suit. <laughs> no, she's horrible. Well, it's because she she pierced her tongue. That throws your vocal cords right oh, off. I didn't know. Is that, that what it was? Yeah. And then yeah, after totally. six months, she finally handed me the little pot leaf and I handed her the keys and the rest. Really? You gave in and gave it to him? Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Did you not want to do it? Did you feel like you gave up your independence and that he was unfair? Because there no, is, he... there are two sides to that story. Of, really? Uh, oh, I you're think... taking her side. Go no, ahead. no, because I think you're. <laughs> he dis seems like it's... a cool dad. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I, but your discipline of her, I appreciate a lot because I think a lot of people, uh, especially people that are fortunate, don't really discipline their kids. Meaning, not discipline. The idea is guidance. Right. The idea is so that they don't end up. Well, I was in therapy who told me, you know, that if I want to get, not my way, but if I want to create a path, I can't lower myself to her level. And I'd already removed everything from her room, including her door. Yeah, I didn't have a door. That's kind of cool. I <laughs> <laughs> no, it is because you really did have a problem. It sounds like you did. Do you think you had a problem from what from removing a door? Don't you think that would mean did did it get your attention? Did you go, wait a minute, this is real. I I have been off the rails. N no, not the removing the door part. It just kept going. So no, it took a lot more. Did you take the walls it. down? <laughs> no, I just moved out. I went to college and then I realized like I was in the wrong and I had a good and I was being a little. Brat. You could say, you could say bad words in front of me. Yeah, I was being a brat. Right, That's she was being a, a cabrat. Yeah, yeah. a cabrat. <laughs> the C I was word. Being kind. I have a similar. I have. I'll tell you, I had a similar situation with uh, my middle daughter, um, and she's now thirty-one, and she's. They're all, you know, you love them so much. You, you, people say, "Who do you love best?" You know who it is. It's one, but um, no, it's, <laughs> it's whoever you're with at the moment. Usually, if right. if, you, if things are good. Well, I'm with you, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and that's, I'm so glad you moved the camera for my reaction. <laughs> my reaction was so sincere. You would have never seen it with the camera. No. It would have been no. like, wow, they see the love. The so my, my middle daughter was uh, just got her license, and uh, she got a ticket that day, 
and then said, and she wasn't supposed to drive other passengers because she just got it. This is a six month time. And she was in a parking lot and there were other guys there and people were stoned. I didn't know the whole deal about it. And she wanted to help jump another person's car. So her car doors were open and they, two guys that were stoned started to put the car in neutral, her car, uh, that was my car. And it started to back up and it scratched the whole side of another car. And it also bent the door on her car and she already got a ticket. Right. So I didn't want it to go on a record. So I paid cash to the person whose car was damaged and right. I paid cash to fix her car, which was, you know, I was like four grand is what right. it was. And I said, you're getting a job. You're going to pay for this. Right. And, um, and then I beat her. No, I said, you're gonna, <laughs> I didn't. And she worked at Cold Stones and the I was a manager at Cold Stone. Well done. Yeah. For my how daughter, long? how long did you do that? How long? I don't know. Two years. Two, something like that. And that happened because? No, no she, I always loved working. Well, I you loved. also had a, 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 didn't you like the manager? I had a boyfriend at Cold Stone that worked oh, at Cold Stone. Oh, this is, this, this is all coming together now. <laughs> did you sing the song when it was, uh, yeah. when they tipped well? Yeah. What's the tip song at? There's a bunch of them. You remember them? Hi ho, hi ho. We thank you for your dough. We come to work and play all day. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. I don't know how they came up with that. That's brilliant. Do you have another one? Um, There's dun 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 We're cheerful and we're holler because we got a dollar. We're thankful because we all are the Coldstone family. Dun 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 dun. Oh my God. My daughter rebelled to all of that. Yeah. So she would wear a hat and she hated singing the song. She refused to sing it. And I they love would that. tip and she would just be there cold stone face. <laughs> and, and my youngest daughter and I would pull up and I would give my youngest a 20 and tell her to run in and we wouldn't buy anything. I would wait in the car outside because I wasn't allowed to go in. But she was being punished. That's why she worked there because she needed to pay off this debt. Right. And my daughter put 20 in the, my little one we put it in the tip jar tip can trash can was swinging yeah. trash can and then run back in the car giggling and we had to watch her through the window and she looked at us with eyes da, 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 da. <laughs> she would she, we holler and we love you fucking father she, she moved her mouth like a puppet <laughs> she hated it and then she was she was gonna work there another month and i let her out when she was like six hundred dollars under the full four thousand dollar payment so i said it's enough i i can't watch this anymore no, that's fun it's fun to torture children are so I much fun to torture I did, I did not torture her i really believed that she needed i mean to i was sing. a deli clerk what kind of job did you have well you were in um carpeting right? i was in carpeting but when i was really young i had a job first at the canadian national exhibition i ran a ride you were an exhibitionist yes i was <laughs> and then what I worked, ride was that uh it was called a vegas chase and uh, what I, was that right? I think I, I I've, I've talked about this before, but it, it's like, you don't have to then. No, but I will. Polar Express, like you know, you know what that thing that yeah. just like looks like a, a caterpillar that goes around. But I had the controls, and I had a microphone, and I'd go, "You want to go faster?" And they'd all yell, "Yeah!" And I go, "You want to go faster?" And they'd yell, "Yeah!" And I'd say, "Make sure the orange shoulder harness over your left shoulder is done up securely. We're going upside down in five seconds." It didn't go upside down, but I would go five, four, mm -hmm. and people would go five. Get me up! Get me up! And I worked there for three days. It's and then I always like right? punishing people. Punishing. I love awkward. <laughs> you and do then, love practical joking. You do. I do. I'm a, I yeah. love Alan Funt. And then I... Uh, he changed his name originally. It started with a C, but he changed it. It did. <laughs> yeah, because... Alan Cunt? Well, what is my son doing now? What have you... What? What's wrong, Alex? <laughs> he had a problem with the... Did the camera go out? What's going on, Alex? What? It hasn't been plugged <laughs> in? It's not plugged He's in. working on the Jenny... No, he goes, I'm just going to plug in the camera that he was moving it for half an hour. It, it's been a half an hour and you it's got not a plugged big in. production here and you've got CBS extension cords. <laughs> These are the cheapest extension cords. I think he drove to CBS just now. Where did you get that extension cord? CBS. CBS. Yeah, I know, I, I know How were you able to identify? I didn't realize that CBS had such an identifiable it's electronics just, uh, Where department. do you go if you got to get one quickly? Where are you going to go? Bob Saget is here. Go to CVS. Yeah, I'm the and MacGyver of extension cords. That was so really now, well done. We know who your least favorite kid is, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the one who puts the camera behind someone's head. Yeah. And then, have you been to CVS? When did you go to CVS to get that, Alex? <laughs> it really happened. It really Oh, my God. That really happened. <laughs> this is an occurrence. He, no, but he was the favorite. He was the favorite kid. You wouldn't do that for me. 
what? or for my friends. He might still be the favorite, but no. He but was would the you if I if you wouldn't run the CBS for me to go get a quick? No, I barely extreme. even want to come in here. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm serious because of COVID. <laughs> it makes me nervous to be in here. We've talked well, about I, this I'm, I, You're the same as me, though. I'm all tested all the time. I, mm -hmm. I went out Vaxed. to dinner with Norman Leary. He's 99 last night. That's I, okay. I get tested. But I, you're I, also on the road a lot. Does that make you nervous? I haven't. A little bit because uh, some audiences I will play, I don't have a requirement. I request it, but, you know, they got to wear a mask. But if you're in a club because I'm trying to break a new 90 minutes to do right. a special, that's the goal before I finish this year with our agent. I'll be talking to him right after this. Right, Stephen. He's very little. Yes. Um, Brad right. Williams, he towers over Brad. Yeah. We're with a new agency now. Did you see I that? I know. I know. It's, uh, I yeah, hope that doesn't it's affect us. C-I-A-S-C-M. Yes. <laughs> they, got the, they're, they just need to buy CAA, merge with ICM. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think next week they're going to buy a vowel. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be exciting. Yeah. They, they rep Vanna. Vanna White, I think. She has them at home. She had a lot of extra vowels for doing that job. So you're doing 90, a new 90 minutes for... Well, what, I guess hope? it'll be... I don't know. I'm figuring it out. Because you also can't shoot a special where you have a masked audience. Well, I did, though. I did. I shot one. Yes, you did. I Just for the CW, I did one for JFL. Oh, that, that, I didn't... That's a different yeah. thing than a streamer that wants... They, 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 it's just... It changes often, but right now they want evergreen... Specials and they had Netflix. Some are you talking specials. about? Yes, and and HBO Max is from what I've been told. Um, but you know, I just want people to be safe. I mean, but I also. But not only they're not wearing masks. You have thousands of strangers within feet of you going ha ha. But that's the ha. thing. My mouth is a petri dish. I'm up there when they laugh. Right. I. I it you goes, blow out right at the end of the no, joke. No, 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 no. You set I up fart. fans. Set up fans. My fans are in the audience, honey. No. I <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> well, you have an idea? You have yes. A, you a, set up fans. You either like You can't blow the audience. What? <laughs> you can't Until do that after, nowadays? After no. the show. No. Not That's, during the show. No. You, you don't go near trouble. the audience. Yeah. I don't. This is the best time for no meet and greets? comedians to be faithful <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and to be uh, and clean and stay away from people, not their choice. But some <laughs> people do whatever they want. I literally go to a gig. Um, I get in without people seeing me. They don't, I don't come in contact with anybody. The mask is on. This is how I protect. This is what I do for me and for others. Cause I'm, I have a giver, you know, I try. I'm thinking of getting the booster, but I don't know. Brad Williams needs a booster when he goes to uh, <laughs> Jenny's. But I, I'm going to get the booster. I'm going to get it. But I don't. I, mine hasn't been approved yet. Oh, which one are you on? I'm Moderna. I, yeah, it's Moderna. Fun. Moderna has been approved. I know. No, no, no. But for the booster, they didn't. They, Pfizer approved the booster. A Moderna. Oh, then people are getting the Moderna booster, but it's not approved. That must be the case. No, is there a Moderna booster? Yes, I thought the third I, I, one was Pfizer. I just talked to five people that had the Moderna they booster. They get the third shot. It's called the third shot. Yeah. And they, you can get Moderna too. And it goes into your taint. Which is, Jackie, the taint? Don't. I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> Don't. No, we have a taint story. <laughs> oh, really? Not for my daughter. Did but... you ever see that musical Taint Your Wagon? <laughs> it's about a wagon that it doesn't know whether what it is <laughs> it's not this it's not that no but she has these words she knows these words all these words i'm so proud of my little yeah girl. but she's dirty sanchez was one of them too he i went to school with him yeah. um so we always terry my wife you know yeah doesn't know the words doesn't know these she doesn't know these words these terms or phrases so we tell them to her <laughs> at a restaurant usually in a family dinner and then she asks the waiter or waitress what is a taint you what tell is a dirty her to do it and she does it but yeah. she's doing it for your amusement no I mean, she's doing no, it for her for her, her, her vocabulary your wife is smart yes yeah, she is and so she is smart there are there are brilliant people who have no idea what a dirty sanchez is <laughs> but they don't need to know i mean it's unnecessary is it unnecessary like a rusty trombone that how do you is, know that you don't need to know until you know what it is but when you know, it's just something to talk about because we get bored. So we talk though, about dirty though, stuff. Um, uh, dirty, gross what's stuff. What's his name? Uh, uh, um, Einstein would have had a tough time with the dirty Sanchez. Oh, that's very, very true. Because you can't get shit out of your mustache. What did you just do? Are you getting a message? <laughs> yeah. Did you just hear that? No, thought? they're looking up uh, dirty, dirty Sanchez. But why do you have to do this? It's why a fecal mustache. Jane likes to give head, but, but Dick likes to give a dirty Sanchez. How, but how often do you put filth in your... I've watched this and listened to this, and I didn't hear filth on this program. Is it bothering you? No. I'll back I mean, off. It doesn't, no, I don't... 
You'll back, did, you'll back off. You don't want to offend me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we went too far for Bob Saget. But the thing is. I think we always talk about things like this and inappropriateness. Caroline? Is it, is it to, Caroline, is it to build a gap between a dad and a daughter? Is that Build a gap or maybe bring them together? That's what, what I mean. Unbuild a gap. Sorry. Here's bridge, the thing. Bridge the gap. Bridge the gap. Thank we you. We have to stay I'm on having brand. Trouble. So. Say what? Stay so, on brand. Go ahead. Stay on brand. So that's why we have to do this every This time. is how, listen. Because you are an R-rated comedian. That's what you're I'm a comedian. to this. That and then I wanted on. a co-host. Right. This is who I am. Yeah. You know me. I This do. is who I am. I and this is how you. I talk when I'm not on uh, AGT or some of the other things that people are talk shows. And then on stage, I'm kind of like this, but this is even more me. And then I said, uh, I want to do a podcast. I don't want to do it alone. She's an influencer and she's very funny and very smart. You know, mm -hmm. she was a teacher for 10 years. And what did you teach? Dirty Sanchez's <laughs> ch children? <laughs> <laughs> Kindergarten for a second. Uh, I did third for a little bit, but mostly kinder for a second. They're adorable. Yeah. They're really, did you punish them like your father did you? No. They came to school punished. Uh, she wor she uh, worked in the inner city. She no, got it. A lot of them had really, really great families and households. They yeah. did. I know. Okay. I'm not saying that. All but right. it wasn't your job to punish them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like they had a hard time at home. It did sound like Some they, of them did. It, yeah. it sounded like they had a rough go. But I think what he's saying is probably not wrong because the most privileged people uh have a, the kids have a rough time at home, you know? Yeah. Right, but I think that their their um, place of nourishment and safety and uh, brightness was school for people that grew up in these communities. This is where they were definitely getting a meal, you know, a full meal. You told me about sometimes you wouldn't go to their homes and it would be like a garage with a sheet set up to, to delineate rooms. Well, at yeah. least they had a Basically. door. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even have a door, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a good callback. That's why he I know, is but Mr. I screwed Bob up Sacker. before with bridging the gap. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, t uh, back can you take down Dirty Sanchez from me? I'm sitting here <laughs> staring at it. I don't Google stuff like that. Martin Mull, there's the man. Oh wow! I'm working on a documentary about him, and it's taken three years, and we're coming to the end of shooting, and we'll be finishing. It I up. love Martin Mull. You're yeah. doing a documentary. On I Martin. have been for three years, and we have. Uh, yesterday, I uh, interviewed Patton Oswalt. Oh my god! Next week, I've got Tom Waits. I'm doing, and that'll be the I last. I love Tom Waits. Who doesn't? Well, people that don't know him. Are you familiar with who Tom Waits is? She won't know. No. He's pretty damn brilliant. Do Maybe it. if I see a picture, then I will. Do it. No, deep you won't dive. know from a picture. Do a His music is great. Right. Talk like yeah. But his voice went through so many stages, and that was because of the alcohol that he lied about to his parents. But um, that's Tom Waits. He's been acting in things for years. He's you know, I did a pilot with him years ago. No in way. In 1981, I did a pilot with him and Dick Sean. That's a gift. Yeah. That's where I, I met him. Dick, I knew his music, but that's where I met him. What was the pilot? Those guys are the, geniuses. It wasn't, uh, it was called The Chicken and the Cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. And it was the San Diego chicken. It was like, I, I have no, Art Matrano, who just passed. Of course. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Yeah. And we did it in, I'm trying to remember who was the uh, executive producer, but it was, it didn't go. It was just a silly little thing. And they, but they used, hired these two amazing forces. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Sean was one of Robin Williams would remind me of Dick Sean and Jonathan Winters. Yes. Uh, but but people don't credit Dick Sean sometimes, but I really saw some of Robin. We all were influenced by people, all of us. And, yes. And uh, and Dick Sean was so brilliant. He was, you would love him. He was in, you saw him. If you saw the producers, uh, the original Mel Brooks's movie, he was uh, in the play Springtime for Hitler. He sang it um, and he was. Uh, he passed away. On stage. It's amazing. And sad. his son, it's really sad, but his son would do the lighting or the sound for him. This was in San Diego. And he would start his act. He would be under a giant pile of newspapers. And leaves. And I and saw leaves. the show. Oh, did you see that? In San Francisco. Oh, I, I didn't see. But he was there. The show was to begin. And he was, he had passed. He had a heart attack and died. And nobody knew. And they thought it was part of the act. And then the son had to run up on the stage and yeah. find his father and take him in front of all these people. It was just a horrible- Tragic as hell. But and maybe wonderful in a way, you know, if you're going Well, if to you're gonna go out, but there's no good way to go out. But if you're good doing doing it on stage, you know, I don't know. I don't wanna have be a corpse on, 
in front of people. <laughs> but I mean, I what heard a closer, it was. Though. I heard it was the act break because what he would do is, oh, you would go into the theater. So they open the doors a uh, half hour before showtime. You walk in. There's a pile of leaves and newspapers on the thing, and they would play a song. Hail to the audience. Hail to one and all. Dun, 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 Hail to the audience for a half hour. It was like a Monty Python type thing. Oh, I love it. Kept playing that. And then I do something like that in my act. Yeah. Happy days. I play this loop of happy days forever. The lights go down. My favorite stuff. Yeah. Until the audience is just so fucking well, that's angry. You're a teenager. That's what I am. Yeah. People go, you're so blue, Bob. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm 12 years old and I learned a bunch of words. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm not a harmful person. I say things. I don't do them. And they're words. They're, they're just words. They're words. It's not what the other TV dad did who's out free now and shouldn't be. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's God in heaven. So anyway. And and he's also defending R. Kelly. Did you that see true? that? Hasn't he? Didn't Cosby say that R. Kelly is being treated unfairly? Has anybody else read that? You know, Google uh, Google uh, Cosby and R. Kelly, what he said about R. Kelly. I think I'm right. I don't know. He's I know they tweeting. changed. What? He's been tweeting a lot, like, since he got out. R. Kelly? No. <laughs> R. Kelly's <laughs> in. R. Kelly's in. R. Kelly's in. Cosby's out. Uh, uh, Cosby says R. Kelly got railroaded with the verdict. The, what's even worse is how happy he is in that picture selection. It's just so, it's so, can you turn that off? That's really upsetting to look at. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bring up R. Kelly. No, thanks. You know, no. he's got a new song. It's, uh, I believe that you're five. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, I, I, I had, uh, I don't know. I've done jokes that I wouldn't do now. You've done jokes that you wouldn't do now. That's the thing that I actually hate about this cancel culture, because mm -hmm. I believe that, we are all life is this is constantly in motion it never is what it is it is what it was it is what it's going to be and what it was to be uh, persecuted now, this is not going to sound great in the in light of what we were just talking about but i'm talking about as artists yeah for our art form 10 years ago you know or 20 years ago or 30 years or something that or for what we found that made people laugh then uh that's what that people were laughing at because saying the unthinkable heinous things or making a joke that would be, uh, you know, an R. Kelly type joke and even expounding on it and horrific triggering words for people now and then, and then, which is what I feel bad about that. It, uh, wow. I triggered people then. So that was kind of thoughtless, but it was, it made people laugh. And that's what I was playing colleges and, you know, but, but, and that was, you know, that's not an excuse. No, that's, it's that's not. what we it, were doing. Listen, no, I it's think, not an excuse. There, there is guilt. I, I feel uh, bad about some of it and some of it. I'm going, no, that was a fucking good joke. And it was meant as a joke because I'm saying how bad, like I would say. The reason it's a good joke is how diabolically wrong the subject matter that's is. That's what you and I know and that's what comedians know. So I would say a joke, like I would mention, I said a joke once on a special. I said, I'd been doing it in stand-up, that this girl was a walk in the park if you enjoyed rape. Right. Now that's right there. I would never say that, although I just did. That'll be the soundbite. Thanks for ruining my career again. <laughs> but, but then the, the follow-up was, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend any rapists. Now the right. purpose of that still could apply today, but nobody would get sarcasm uh, or, or satire. That's not supporting. That is saying these are the worst creatures on earth. But I think that's that why is it works. lost. But I think that is lost on Gen Z right now and a lot of people that are very literal and that means i need to be more responsible because if if if, if they don't if that's, but they've cut the heart that form out of is, comedy but that but we can find a new heart i think and maybe find other ways to like i'll weave into a joke like that i'll watch bill burr or dave Chappelle do something and i go they're they're going back there they're not afraid but they i tee it up I'll, if i'm gonna say something do you find yourself doing that more all the time. And I think the difference between somebody like Bill Burr or Chappelle, and I've always said this, I, I'm jealous of the sense that they don't have to answer to anybody. I love my job on AGT. Yeah. I love be, uh, being the, the name that is, uh, you know, for different products that have hired me and paid me. I just like, I like doing all these different things. I feel like now you can't and be like anything that is ad supported and do that kind of comedy. And I think that is comedy. You know, uh, the two masks of tragedy and comedy, the reason they always show together that there's a, there's a thin line. Very. And we've talked about that in the past and on other things where, 
you have to laugh at the shit that would make you cry. And people don't know, we talked about this before uh, on, well, on here. It wasn't on here. It was your no. other incarnation yeah, of yeah. a documentary thing. Yeah. It was for uh, JFL. Jeff L. Uh, but, you know, the more loss I've had, the more I've seen family members suffer, people that I love so much. If I'm on stage that night, God help people, because I'm going to say some things I probably shouldn't say if right. I'm going to do a show, because I am hurting, because I've right. got somebody that's on life support. And it's not an excuse. It's just how I'm processing it. Right. I, I'll to go to a therapist. Or if I don't have time and I'm working, I'll get some venom out in a way and I'll go off on a subject. I mean, I, you know, I, don't, was, I don't mean to. W w you know the movie Life is Beautiful? Of course. You know, so that's- How do the, you not, right? Right, so that's the, the the epitome of kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, he was making the Holocaust and a uh, the the camps seem like a fun place for this child. Which really helped the kid. I mean, it- Right, it and helped probably helped him too to, that. that's where his focus was. Instead of just his survival, how can I make this a, a better place and a goofy place? And there are people in today's society that would say, well, how can you clown around and how can you, go people are dying and people are suffering. And I would say to those people, that's why I need to clown around. That's why I need to joke around. Uh, that's uh, why a I- A billion percent where, I'm, where I live. You know, but our world doesn't live where we live. This is a really tough time for comedians who have kind of, um, the currency, our currency, is inappropriateness. And and it doesn't change for me. It still is, but I feel more of a need to entertain those people. And I'll go to places, and you will too, where you'll have the woke left, and then you'll have the far right completely, uh, you know, MAGA believers and uh, vaccine deniers, and then the other side that's vaccine, the woke that's vaccine deniers, because right. it's not natural. Right. And then the central the people that just want to be nice people and let's stop fighting, uh, but that's not, you can't really say, uh, I've tweeted, uh, you know, if the Beatles wrote every, uh, all you need is love right now, people would just go, fuck you. And then I tweeted it and people went, fuck you. A bunch right. Of people, <laughs> because they don't want to hear about love because they're going, I can't, I hate the guy two blocks over. I hate the other city. I hate the other team. It's all UFC well, fighting. That's Jeff Ross, Jeff Ross was on the, uh, on our last podcast. How much he, did he eat here? <laughs> we didn't serve. Can oh. you see this? Are you, is that your way of asking must have for a done sandwich? A, no. I'm just saying he might have had a short visit. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a pizza, buddy. Yeah. I know. He I loves love You know, Ross. he comes from caterers. That's I do. His parents were caterers. Yeah. So, uh, he, and they didn't live long. They, they no. He was they were he was Young. 16 when they, uh, I think he was 16 or 12. I think when the first one passed. Mm. But he's, he's, what was the point? He said that Twitter, I don't know oh, if yeah, this is Twitter, what you Oh, yeah, the Twitter, yes, it was. To, okay. Go ahead, you can say it. That Twitter is the worst audience, the worst crowd, and yeah. he won't perform for Twitter anymore. He still finds Instagram okay, but it depends which social media you're on because Twitter tends to be the worst crowd he's right. found. Right. He said no, no joke. Nothing he has ever done in the sense of humor on Twitter has landed you know, appropriately. It's gotten a dis... It used to be great. Yes, I it was the be, only place. My place to... My reason that I loved Twitter was, okay, a kid is walking to his car in a mall and he's going to hit Twitter because he's addicted to his phone. And I got one line there and it made him laugh. And it was probably a dick joke or something silly. Right. Making fun of myself. That was the hope. And then I... And then he laughed and then people go... Then all of a sudden it's got thousands of people liking it because it made, made him laugh. Right. Once in a while, that can still happen. Conan O'Brien's pretty great about trying to put out something funny and smart every day. He tries to do that. It's like a messaging thing. He's not out promoting things. He will as he does his new show, but pretty much he's trying to pass on comedy. It's one of the... But comedy is so subjective that it's amazing today. The, you know... When you and I started out, the worst case scenario is we didn't get a laugh and we had to live in the silence. Right. Today- Now I it, don't care about that. I can get through that. Yeah. I, I don't mind. Silence is golden. No, it's funny. <laughs> it is funny. Awkward <laughs> is funny. When there's nothing going on, I love that. I don't mind that Me either. too, because I know it'll be okay, because we've been doing this for 40 years, so it's like- And there's, there's something to be said for the comfort that we have. <laughs> yeah. But that being said, now, instead of that silence, there is the loudest roar up against, you know, uh, uh, Gilbert Gottfried for not even a great joke, and he'll admit that, yeah. lost a whole campaign and a good portion of his his income. Yeah. And if anybody knows Gilbert like I do, he's the sweetest. He's most, adorable. He's the sweetest, most wonderful person, a great family man, a great father, a really funny guy who was the 
one of the first guys, along with you, one of the first guys that I saw that was pushing that envelope. You know, he would right. do Christ on the cover of TV Guide, and he'd have the, the the mic stand. And at that time, it doesn't sound like much, but in the seventies, the late seventies and early eighties, it was. Yeah, you know, and and he he did me in a little bit, and we, I'm very close with Gilbert. I, I I talk to him. He calls me just to have some laughs. Yeah, and, and he's you know he's gone through stuff. You know, he's been health and and he's got a wonderful wife, uh, Dara, and his kids, and they're adorable. And he's their dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> it's just your dad gilbert um, <laughs> what do you want <laughs> but but he does tiktoks with his daughter he does i know he's so and the documentary about it was really good uh, brilliant if you get a chance download the, the gilbert godfrey documentary about his life and his career it's and amazing. it just shows him collecting shampoo bottles from hotels and stuff <laughs> which he does yeah. but what's interesting was that my comedy central roast that john stamos was the roast master and all of the comedians and that's where uh beloved norm mcdonald did his very memorable uh uh non-roasty tribute uh of doing no he was reading joke from a joke book he said saget i'm gonna do jokes from the 40s and i went i don't know i said say fuck once i don't want to do that i don't want to make funny you're my friend (laughs) and i went um I, i had a hard time uh, I've had a hard time dealing with this one. I know, and it, can I just say not to not to bring this down, but you know, I I, I was sitting here in the podcast on the on the day with Jesselnik and w- on when we found out, and it just broke my heart. And I think it was like two days later. Um, I don't know if it was Instagram or whatever you did. That was uh, my, for, uh, my a podcast. eulogy. Yeah, and and it was the most touching, wonderful, emotional, um, beautiful. I mean. Is as much as it was beautiful for Norm, it kind of you're a really good guy and a good friend to have in life, and uh, oh, the fact God, that you respect. You, but you, you brought, texted me that, and uh, I, oh, but I was crying. I was for, crying uh, listening to you. I was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but the thing, and you told a story about the uh, that he just couldn't say anything bad, and and from that I started doing this deep dive of Norm. You know, and I was watching one of the things that stood out because of what you had said about the, the your roast and he didn't want to do anything bad. And to that end, I think what he did was very, um, I think it was Norm McDonald, but Andy Coffin-esque. Very much so. Uh, and he Kaufman, was like that. He was like that. And uh, it was beautiful. And you, you watch it now. But I also watched him on Letterman the day he got the notified that uh, he took the phone call that he was being fired from SNL. And if you watch that Letterman spot on uh, on YouTube, I think it is, he uh, he will never say anything bad about the guy who fired him. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. And what an opportunity, like he had already been fired. But he didn't take personal, he took issue with OJ. He didn't take issue with being, if you tell him not to say something, it's like us, you right. know, it's like we're the, I guess he was the purest version of don't say this. And then, and then he would find like the most brilliant way to do it. He, had, he right. was a wordsmith also. He right. loved wordplay. And there was, there was a brilliance to him that was really quite singular. I, I can think of people that reminded me of him. But, um, you know, there were some really brilliant. But he said to Letterman that time, he goes, how do you even fight? Like, how do you not tell the guy to go fuck him? So how do you not like uh, he said, you're fired. He goes and, and Norm said, well, that's not the worst thing he said to me. I go, what, what's the worst thing he said to me? I said, why am I fired? And he said, because you're not funny. Right. And he said, that was the worst thing. That's the thing that hit. Him. That's accurate. You and know? I was told that once. Mitzi Short told me that once. What? She said, you're not funny anymore to me. She said, she that. said, you've lost it. And the reason was she came to Vegas when we were doing the comedy store at the Dunes Hotel. Right. You did that? No. You were smart. You were headlining Vegas. And we were still doing the Dunes like a week before they tore the place down with a wrecking ball. <laughs> really? So you're at the club. I'm at, the, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the theater there. It was their last hurrah. And so they would have, you know, Sam Kennison would headline, Roseanne would headline, whoever she would get. And... I was hosting or going up third or something, and I was helping keeping one of the comedians who was an alcoholic uh, sober all night who was very close to Mitzi. So I was, you probably know who I'm talking about, and I worked hard. I went to his room. He burned his eyes with the shower. He had drinks everywhere, food everywhere, and I tried to help him. I stayed up all night. I didn't sleep, 
and she came and I I just slept for like an hour, got to the show. I was a nervous wreck uh, trying to help him. This is this is a good hall pass excuse. <laughs> and I just sucked. I was terrible. I just was I had a terrible, terrible set, but I was trying to he was so panicked. I was trying to help him. Right. And so I uh, but it didn't really matter because a year later I'd gotten a couple jobs and she never really fell out of uh love of me and she never fell out of love of you either. no she was always she loved you from the moment you hit that stage yeah it's interesting yeah Is you guys Polly Shore's mom yeah 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 she ran the comedy store she owned the comedy store and when we came out here as kids you had to she it was the voice of everything comedy as far as you know you're very good call in for spots and that's how you got on stage and everybody who got on stage the comedy store really was the epicenter of everything you we would did. go right to the tonight show you that, did a tonight show. whatever job we got it's because i got make me laugh was my first job and we were both on make we, me laugh yeah we were and i got that from somebody in the you audience were hilarious on it did you do that like 12 weeks you did you did a it lot it seemed uh, i did about three but it seemed like 12 because time <laughs> flies when you're having fun i had nothing and you had the handbag you had the glove and that's it no, I had, had some more. stuff. You had more. No, I didn't have. You had material. I, I we we started talking. My material was terrible. <laughs> what? It was terrible. No, I thought you were hysterical. I remember. I I had seen Sweet. you. You came up and and uh, uh, played yuck yucks, and I think that's where we met. And the next time I saw you, you there was a, a bagel store that opened. <laughs> we're um, back. We're back in Toronto, uh -huh. and it was like an open window. You could see it was, it was like a deli. A, it really was. It, a was, deli. it was a deli, and yeah. I walked in. I go, "There's Bob's. That's the." Bob, I know from Yuck Yucks. I think it was a Hiccups. I think that's what it was called or something. Hiccups. But it was, a, it was the bagel store during the day and Hiccups at night, right? See? I'd made it. <laughs> it was like playing Greenblatt's, which sadly is closed. Oh, it did close. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. It's oh, just, to, just to go back to that uh, counterculture thing and, and the canceling of it all, just real quick to finish up because I, got, I got sidebarred by emotion with the Norm mention. But at my roast, we're back to Gilbert. I was just it dawned on me that I didn't finish that one thought, which is he said terrible things about me over and over again. And that was his joke. The joke was the same statement over and over again that I did something horrible to a girl that I murdered and did other things. And he, but he said it like 30 times. There's no truth to the rumor. So what happened was this <laughs> terrible person on YouTube, uh, uh, not a nice person, couple of people did it. They took clips from that. They took an excerpt from a book and I had gone on a radio show in the morning, uh, Opie and Anthony, where you say stuff you don't want to say right. in the morning to shock jock, not unlike, you know, uh, Dirty Sanchez, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. They get you to say that stuff. Right. And I was, I don't like my behavior on that. And then I told a story in a book and, and what else did I do? One other thing, I can't remember. Um, I did I did three things that this these people quoted as me being guilty of something. And because the comedians were trashing me on the roast and saying that I was a terrible person, especially the people that I worked with that I loved uh, and I'm still close with, these all these kids, uh, Gen Z, on TikTok say that I am a, a murderer and a, and a terrible person. And I just, I was like, I should, do I need to sue Gen Z? Because- No, that's TikTok. That, I was going to say that. I think TikTok is- kind of like Twitter too, where they not Twitter, I think it's worse. I mean they're worse. they're hurdlings. Like, they go and they they'll say the same thing. Or they believe someone who is I'm just continue your thoughts. Sorry, I need to be educated. No, no, no. It's the same thing. It's what you were saying. They just go on, you know, one person will say something and then everyone will pile on on top of that. Or they'll make a post with a conspiracy theory. Yeah. And then it'll just circulate. But then they'll believe it. Well about, and about me Well that's like the couch guy that we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. Right? But that's context doesn't have any place anymore in our society. No, I used to have a joke. Men can breastfeed. I read that. Okay, I wrote it down and then I read it. <laughs> and that was the joke. And right. that's where we're at. People will read a comment and believe that that's the news. They These kids believe that the Comedy Central roast is the news. Yeah, they no. They think that that's the news. But comedians, if they're attacking him with this joke, it has to be true. No, it's an extreme version of his weird sense of humor that definitely doesn't play now. And the roast wouldn't have been shown, it was shown after midnight. But That's even what. our generation, our generation used to say, you know, I know this fact. And how do you know this? I read it. 
oh, then it must be real. R reading it. Where but did you read it? But we used to, when we were kids, there was books. But even books, you know, it doesn't, a book doesn't have to be right. But that was the end all and be all. If for, it's printed. If it's printed. <laughs> and now uh, everybody who's sitting at home alone, friendless, in their underpants on a bed, chooses a good font and they can start a rumor yeah. or take a piece of whatever it is that you and I do out of context. That's why Chappelle is the best at this as far as, he was the first guy to take everybody's phone and lock them into those yeah. packs. Because Chris so, Rock does it and yeah. Bill does it, and it's smart. It really is smart because people, we didn't have that at the comedy clubs where we were able to, that's what you did at the comedy store. You want to cross that line. You want to see where it's too much. And so they don't do it there. They've been really good. And the, the places that I worked at are clubs. Um, I've got security on everybody. So if anybody's taping anything, they go up. Not only do you have to have them, if you're not locking the phones up, which is, right. you know, pouches and service and you're paying, you right. know, I don't know what it is, five to 10 grand for the that service for your show. They uh, will delete the photo or video, but then you have to delete deleted photos and videos. So you, I, oh, I've wow. trained security staffs wherever I go to delete both sections. So there is no Has cloud of it. Has that become a bone of contention at all during a show? Or I always have a bone of contention if I'm having a good show. <laughs> <laughs> but has anybody had a fight in the middle of the show? Where they I've had fights lately. Uh, going out, um, I've seen people having. A, there was. I was in uh, St. Louis, and I didn't know there was a fight in the room. I just heard a lot of hubbub. And like, hubbub. hubbub. That's a word we <laughs> don't hear enough. Hubbub. <laughs> hubbub. Hubbub. Hubbub is usually like my son coming in and trying to change the camera angle. <laughs> What's the hubbub? He realized that he had enough battery to go to CVS and come back <laughs> with an extension cord. I love that he went to CVS to get you an extension cord. And had I known my son was going, there are a few things that uh, your mom wanted me to pick up at CVS. So I could have. But isn't it embarrassing for him to get a vibrating wand? <laughs> I wasn't going to say it out loud. Do they sell that at CVS? They they do. They oh. do. They sell everything. They have. Uh, no, you can you rent them at the front with the floor polisher. <laughs> the floor polishes can be really rough on the crotchal area. <laughs> so she says. Fine. Yeah. That then, if you go into CVS and you go where all of the stuff is, where all of the uh, birth uh, AIDS, not AIDS, but birth stuff, I'm not digging out of this one. What's no. birth stuff? Well, the, the stuff that you would, uh, uh, you know, birth control, all kinds of stuff. and Which and is right beside the, the, the testing stuff, too. And, and by, the, uh, by the Gatorade, because you're very thirsty after all that. <laughs> Hydrate. You have to hydrate if you're using all that equipment. Yeah. But they actually have vibrating things that now they sell. At CVS? Yep. Next yeah. to birth stuff? Right there. Those little, there are little rings that go on your finger to help the other person or yourself. Are you sure that's not just like a diaphragm? No, you know what? I was in the toy section. I think I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I made a mistake. See, I always go back to that kind of joke. That's what's wrong. That's how that's I get. That's what's right, buddy. And never change any of that. I won't. I I'm not going to grow, I've decided. You don't want to grow. You want to uh, commit to who we are and be ourselves. And ultimately, it comes out of who are you? You're a great guy. You're a good person with a good heart. Well, it takes one to know one. Yeah, but, you know, it takes one to tell everybody else. You know who he is? And that's what I'm doing today. I, yeah. I love you, buddy. I love you, too. I do. and uh, I love you guys, too. We love you, too. <laughs> I love we're you. We're glad too. we're your dads. <laughs> By the way, dad. I have something to tell you. <laughs> your yeah. mom and I were very close before you were born. <laughs> You're a see, saget. Do you see uh, Caroline trying to whisper discreetly? <laughs> what do you, you guys want to do a prank call? <laughs> No? I hate prank calls. <laughs> no one likes prank calls. I'm, I'm the guy that does them. I used to you make them. You haven't done them in a while. Used to make I, them. I used to make them as a 14-year-old, and I recorded them on cassette tapes. I would Me call too. people. I know you did. Yeah. We did the same stuff. Yeah. And I would record it. So I why don't you like, like them? them? Because I don't like uh, uh, hazing people anymore. I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I think it's 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 great. You've done it before. I you even I did that show when I did a little thing yeah, on that. Yeah, that was fun. And but it's like something that because you did it, I wanted to do it. But like, and Jackass, you know, th that was a perfection of what they did. But I still didn't like to see a portatory with a guy getting out with excrement and all that sewage eater. I all didn't over. see that. I got to Google that. Yeah, it was there, famous. That sounds great. Famous. He's, they're going to find it now. They're oh, now it's coming up. In. She's Googling again. They got an extension cord for the for the uh, <laughs> look internet. What put, look what she put up on the board now. Yeah, wow. it's just a cursor, which I, is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I, I love you. Also. I love you. We can, uh, I and let's plug some stuff. So uh, number one, your podcast. 
John Thank Stamos? you. Yeah, John Stamos. <laughs> He's Question. very having dinner with him tonight. Let me drop more names. No, he's saying, do you want to phone him? And No. Okay. But it's a sweet idea. <laughs> he, he said no. He, he won't, he won't <laughs> like it. No, I really know him. He's really my friend. <laughs> he will, I heard a, the other day. He will day, hate it. You guys, uh, he told me, uh, we, we live close to each other, and he told Your me, wife. my wife will hate it. These are bad ideas. <laughs> why why Thanks, doesn't no mean no for a guy? <laughs> <laughs> Only for a girl. Uh, what was I going to say that you went over to his house and you were watching, I love the movie Showgirls. Yeah. In his backyard. In his backyard. And that I was love, his birthday. I love bad movies. And then he told me, I said, I love that. And then he sent me his bad movie. I'm trying to remember what it's, he's in it. He plays the, like the hero. Do you know what movie he sent me? It's really funny, not meant to be funny. <laughs> Do you know which one I'm talking about? I'll tell you. I'm trying to remember. He, he was I'll in. I'll tell you. My uh, Man is a Loser. No, no, or, no. Here, here I'll, I'll get it. Here it is. Um, keep talking, and then I'll. Well, when I was a little kid, um, <laughs> I thought she was going to say, "Who else we can prank?" <laughs> is she? I actually. Uh, oh, ne never too young to die. Oh, I heard about this thing. Yeah, you never saw it. No, no. Oh, I was busy that year. Do you want to see the trailer? Yeah, I would look at that. Okay, put up this. Uh, put up the trailer of Never Too Young to Die. Look, and it sounds her... like a James Bond title. Oh wow. Are you in this now? Yeah, I guess I'm in it now. <laughs> you were, okay. She was not in it before with no. you? No. no. You know, it's interesting. You did the Cold Stones Adam's Family theme, and now here you are, uh, Cousin It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never Too Young to Die. This is uh, Bob Saget's best friend movie. You're, are you doing any more direct? I know you're directing did a movie. right now. I, I I'm in a movie that's. Uh, I saw you went out to Aruba. Or I went to Cayman Islands. Yeah, and we hid, hid some uh, doubloons. In a chest under under the sea. This but is that, your this is your best friend. This was his movie. <laughs> Star Grove. Thank you, little young man. Thank you. <laughs> you know there are from time to time some small assignments. The new American hero. Go! <laughs> Where have you been shooting lately? Libya. Find this disc. You mean the one that your father sent? He inherited all of his father's enemies. <laughs> and just one of his friends. <laughs> John Stamos is Star Girl. Have a new job. Well, I think I'm falling in love. He gets the ladies too. Yeah, that's an interesting that's thing. That's vanity. About it. Yes, vanity it is. Is Donja. So pretty. Donja. So was Vanity. <laughs> what year is this? 86. This is before I met him. Gene Simmons is Ragnar. Yes! Oh, I didn't know he was Ragnar. He was Ragnar. Did you made a wet kiss for this? The Sting of Death. Hey. Where the red starts turning into the blue mane. Whoa. That guy was never heard I'm from again. You really are, Stargirl. There you go. And that's your friend. Oh. Uncle Excuse Jesse me. is... Star Grove. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. It didn't work. That was like a... Uh... There was no editing in this film. They threw nothing away. <laughs> this is the film. Star Girl. The explosives in this look like a gender reveal. The only one standing between life and death in a brave new world. Star Grove. Never too young to die. I think we should do it again. No, nope. that's the Jesse I know. Yeah, <laughs> never too young to die. George Lazenby was in it, and and who Robert was? England. Wow. You know who that is? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Freddy Star Girl. Girl. Yeah. All right, we can stop that one. We can one. stop it. <laughs> <laughs> You're too young. I'm too young to keep going with this. He sent me that trailer because I told him I like bad movies, so he's got a really good sense of humor. But that's a horror. I've done horrible movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, he won't answer. Stop that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more pranks. Stop. Why, it. why does no not mean no? I feel like Caroline I'm... has a problem with reading people's uh, energy. <laughs> energy or listening to words. This takes people. Put up Caroline, the, have put you up not heard? She's starting to sweat now. I could see you. Put the screen up with the two of them looking cute together. Who's that? 
the two of you. That's what I like. Oh, let's keep Thank that you for up. doing that. I apologize. I just, I'm not a, I'm not a prank call guy. I used no, I to get do it. that. I'd I'm call the store and I'd say, you know, like a Kmart, do you have plastic balls? And the guy would say, yes. And I'd say, well, you should see a doctor, that kind of stuff. Right. You have cotton balls? Yeah. Sure. Who, 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 are you Peter Rabbit? You know, things like that. Right. Didn't even make sense. But I heard other people doing it. And then, of course, Crank Yankers really perfected that. Did you do phone calls for Prank Yankers? No. For prank yankers, no, no, or for either, crank yankers. Mm -hmm. So we ca we came up with this podcast because uh, I I do I still do it all the time, <laughs> all the time, all, all the, the time. time at home, at yeah. home without. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You call strangers, you just dial random numbers. Ra random but number. your your number's blocked. Yes, It'd be funny if it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it would not. No, at all. it would not. I'd but be people are listening right now. Do you? What do you say to them? What kind of things do you do? Um, what kind of things do I do? I, she was on the phone for a lot of them. We were doing it during the uh, during COVID. Uh, the, you asked yeah. to make a super <laughs> spreader. Oh yeah, I had a catering company. Uh, uh, I'm I'm catering. They, the restaurant was closed, and I asked. I'm throwing a super spreader. Uh, do you have? I want a lot of finger foods and where people can share and you know different cups of uh, libation with multi straws so we can get together. <laughs> you also asked uh, like a. IVF place if you could come get semen to implant into your wife that you just wanted to come pick it up <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah yeah just a handful just a handful well that's so, not that bad I no mean, it that's wasn't an, an actual... IVF place it was like it was a like sperm a donate bank. a sperm bank a sperm bank but but the, I wanted to make do you have a savings or a checking account in that sperm bank <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't even think about that you know savings spur bank spur bank no spur bank. bank spur bank spur bank would be Spurs. I mean, I don't, yes, bone spurs. I, That's uh, where you keep your. I had a friend who was a teller at a sperm bank. What did they tell? <laughs> told them, they told. Come all. on, that's Come what on. they say at the yes. sperm bank. <laughs> Come on, you guys, you guys with your velvet stanchions. <laughs> so, uh, but but and we started doing prank calls and talking together. And and my wife Terry said, "What's this for?" And I said, "For nothing." And she goes, "Well, just record it and make it a podcast." And here you are today, Bob. This it's is so much fun. This is me wasting time and not having anything to do and <laughs> spending quality time with my daughter. No, you wanted to do this too. You I did. did, and and I, you don't do things that you don't want to do. I want to do it. I you know, and I love it. And this is my favorite thing. And I get to spend time and talk to good friends. And it's a reason I haven't seen and you Brad in a long Williams. time. And Brad Williams. <laughs> and I get to spend quality time with my daughter. So this yeah. is basically, this is it. I love it. But I did I pr did I promote uh, oh, so your podcast? I guess the podcast is my name with here for you after it. B B Bob Ca uh, Bob, Bob Saget Bob Cat he Goldwyn <laughs> is here for you. Yeah, Bob Saget here for you wherever. Bob Saget's here, right? Yeah. Who are you asking? Uh, I don't know my own Yourself. name of my own Bob Saget here for you. And I want to thank you. And you also got Heidi Klum to do a thing for me for my next scleroderma, Scler scleroderma research which is a foundation. wonderful, the scleroderma research foundation is, uh, something that you have been tirelessly the advocate for. I know that you lost your sister to this horrible, horrible disease. And I've come, uh, you used to do live events. I remember the last time I did the live event, it was you had Robin there. And yeah, you know, anybody w would show up to do this. The last one we did in L.A. Uh, before COVID was at the Beverly Wilshire, and on stage was John Mayer, Dave Chappelle, John Stamos, Ken Jeong, and myself. And uh, on the invitation, I said, "Dave, to Dave, would you do it?" And Dave said, "Put on the invitation." Dave Chappelle says he might come. <laughs> and it was on the actual mailed out invitation and he went and came and he took his jet and it was just like he is uh, he's a special one he really is he's really a good guy and he's really there for his friends and he's really there for stand-up comedy yeah as an industry and he's really there for all of us he's got great you actually were one of the comics that went out and played in this cornfield in yellow springs and uh he's opening a club now right yep right there mm -hmm. uh, and he's kind of the mayor of the town wow <laughs> it was really cool to walk around there and be around with everybody and to get to be with the other great people which is john mayer and jeff ross was there at the time but i was there when they had to shut down because there was a COVID incident and that's what his movie it's called untitled uh, is about it's a documentary it, it premiered at radio city music hall dave Chappelle opened radio city music hall and they're showing it they will have shown it a few days ago when this is being heard at the hollywood bowl um and that that is uh, an amazing thing. They're showing this movie, and I am in it for a brief moment. But um, it's really about Dave 
and um, and Donnell Rawlings, and um, it's just really it's, it's about a lot of people. Michelle Wolf, and that whole journey of going to the, the cornfield and doing jokes in the cornfield. Wow! And, and uh, it's Dave. You know, it's just um, he's reinventing what comedy is today. Yeah, he would be. I mean, and I love Bill Burr very much too. He's he's a special guy, you know. I love a lot of people. I mean, yeah. Bill Burr is coming on. He'll be on uh, next week, right, or or the week after. You'll in, you'll in, so. Do you know yeah. Bill well? I do know Bill. I know Bill's wife. Bill's wife's she's so great. Father, Nia. Yeah. Bill's wife's father used to be my manager. Did you know Ben Hill? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy for years, shit. and he gave me my first special on uh, Cinemax. Right. Yeah. So that it was I, you and and skin flicks. It was like soft core. <laughs> yes. Cinemax was uh, they yeah. called it Skinemax, I think for a while. Uh, for a while right. they did. So he gave me that, and he moved back east. But I knew Nia when she was a little girl, and she used to come and play with you at the house. You probably don't even remember. You guys were like five or six years old. She's so sweet and she so is. great. And then she was casting for Comedy Central and MTV for a while. She I like would've... her much better than I like Bill. <laughs> She's prettier. She is. She yeah. definitely is. He's, so know, although he's attractive, he's he, in the right lighting. He's got pretty eyes. I'm gonna. So then we'll reset the Alex. Get extension cords. We'll we'll change the lighting. In You're gonna here need for a, a kicker light. You want it to be low, and it reflects those baby blues he's got. So you got that. Uh, and, uh, Dave Chappelle's movie. You have well, uh, that, that's uh, Dave's thing. But I, I've the got, movie you did. When does that come out? Uh, the the it's either Blue Iguana or Killing Daniel. I assume in a couple months. I don't know. I haven't been told yet. I don't know because I'll be doing press. So. But I really enjoyed it. It was directed by a guy named Jeremy Lalonde, and it's kind of a, a combination of uh, Secession and uh, Knives Out. It's a dark comedy uh, attempt, and it's it's good. It's got good people in it. Uh, and it. and you're directing again? I I am. Well, I was the about, documentary. The documentary I'm finishing up right now about Martin Mull. It's got Steve Martin, Eric Idle, Amazing. Fred Willard when he was alive. Of course, oh, wow. not after that would have been awkward. Just be kind of quiet oh god i hate doing death jokes about somebody that i love so much uh, we're all we're go, we're not all end up there bob so don't feel uh, bad okay i feel better we're close <laughs> to and it. it's got david allen greer who no, just won not. a tony and uh and it's got really wonderful people everywhere so um it's really celebrating martin mull is a great artist as well as and you're a good director you know dirty work was a great movie thank you, you know and people should uh look at that again uh, not only for bob saget's director uh work directing work but for norm mcdonald and Artie lang and i think that's become it has there i would imagine there cult, was an, it's a cult favorite but and, in the last few weeks i bet you it's there's been an uptick there, and, there has been and people are asking me to make the r-rated cut because i had to take seven minutes out of it i didn't know that yeah it was an r-rated movie there's a thing where he was uh uh molested can't uh uh, like I haven't said anything yet on this uh, program, but uh, in prison, and he's pulling his pants up as he's walking into frame, and he's going, hey, you know, just, just, just disgusting or whatever. He's he's very upset with everybody, ridiculous. And then he goes, you know, that and the and the other thing, you know. But he said instead of the other thing was an, and the anal rape, right? But we had to take out anal rape in order to not be an R-rated movie. And we had to take out a bunch of stuff. So I don't know if it's worth putting in things like, oh, we got anal rape back in. Boy, wow. that's a win-win for. Well, I Norm. think there's a per, there's a there is a a, a sec. Of, of the audience that would love to just I think so. see anal rape. And we were, who, yeah, I mean, show it. That'd be, well, you will show it up on this screen, I have a feeling. That's, That's Caroline. Caroline does that. That's My son runs it. out for the extension cords. I understand. Caroline, Caroline is in charge of our audio visual. Jeremy, if we don't have any anal rape, uh, we'll draw some. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you get gift certificates for therapy for Caroline? <laughs> <laughs> good luck caroline i like hilarious. caroline she's just trying to make it a trying to shake the show up make it better she thought she would make a, a fun thing by having us crank call and i didn't mean to be the opposite of improv on that i apologize no, you're not. No, why because and you you're not the no. only one that said no to no you know it, now it's consistent she yeah. asks every time and most people just say no <laughs> so, <laughs> that's good so isn't she, that good she's I mean, it's consistent we do it now when you're putting a prank what? call your she's agent, gonna go another one right your now agent. what are you doing she's Caroline? coming up with another prank you, call. you have a, you're gonna leave like this is the end yeah i'm gonna go and you have no idea no this is no the that day. is the worst by the way that's the worst one of all call your that is kids. the worst one of all i don't i don't prank you i don't prank you you've pranked me yeah i have you have i don't think i have prank phone call you did on wasn't it the Whiskey Ginger podcast? With Andrew Santino. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, you were. Yeah. She was upset that she wasn't part of uh, this. Which, by the way, perfect segue because I was upset that he decided to. We have been going back and forth for months and months when we decided we were going to do this podcast about a name and a title. And what I said, like the bald and the beautiful was one. It's kind of cute. Right. And we came up with all these names. And then finally I get here and th not this one. Uh, the normal poster is up that just says Howie Mandel does stuff with a picture of his head. And I was like, what happened to the duo? This is what it ended up being. <laughs> so I've been I pissed. I forgot. I've been pissed. We'll, the, we'll adopt time. the new one. This will be the new one. Well, we can have people vote if you want to vote and you like this new one, or you could submit your own. I don't too, know why like, you have lenses in your glasses on the back of your head and he does not. Because my hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I feel like I should make a new one though because I don't like the back of my head in that. I tried to edit it so it, like oh you the knew it. You knew that it wasn't good it too. Was like, no, like you know when you get those little like cow licks. Like I just tried to like make it so it's yeah, a little. Maybe darker. you want to brush your hair <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Never mind. I don't want this one, but I want something like it. And okay, I'll post. send me a new picture. Really? Um, yeah. That's why I didn't want her to be part of the poster. I, I will say, if you were, God forbid, arrested and you went to prison, right. you don't want to enter with glasses on the back of your head because you're inviting something. Yeah. Or not. You don't think I'm deterring something? Nah, I think you're they saying. They can see me coming. I had a friend who got a tattoo of eyes on the back of his head. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Really smart. Did you tell him your tattoo idea that you were Mine? doing? Yeah. A camel on my toe. Wow. That's kind of cute, but kind of upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what she told me from college. She's getting a tattoo and she's going to put a camel on her toe. And I said, I get the joke. And I laughed when you told me, but mm -hmm. there is no joke that's going to last 60 years where you just over and over and over again, mm -hmm. that same joke. No, that, it doesn't work with anything. Nothing. It could be uh, the you'll, most wanna, you'll get your toe canceled. You don't need that. <laughs> the other thing is, when you're talking about getting your mouth pierced, uh, one of my daughters wanted years back to get, when she was 16, to get a belly ring. And I said, you're not going to want it. I know people that have them and they ooze pus and it's disgusting <laughs> and all this stuff. And she said, I want it. And I said, give it, give it six months. Just give it six months and tell me if you still want it. I said, why don't you want me to have it? I said, basically, I believe that if uh, a young woman is wearing a midriff and it's a belly ring, it's basically a sign with an arrow that says, eat it, Joe's. Oh my God. <laughs> because you went from being uncomfortable my... with the way I talk around my daughter to you talk about going my down. Mom, on... No, not going mom... down. No, it means a restaurant sign. That's what it meant. It's a, it means you're pointing at the crotch. If you're looking at the <laughs> a belly ring, a man's eyes or woman's eyes, if it's a sexual per moment, will look at the belly ring and they'll go, that's a sexual person. They're showing their navel. What if you pierced it like with an arrow pointing Mom up? Mom took me to that, go get my belly button pierced. I know. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say because <laughs> my wife just has a clip on, not a. You know what? I actually had tattooed on my penis. It says my eyes are up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that, uh, but you don't see it all so the time. So did she listen to you? She did, and she didn't want it because she had a friend that had it done, and uh, it pus came out, and she didn't want pus. Apparently, is not attractive. <laughs> no. You've said the word pus three times. Well, you know, it's kind of a <laughs> disgusting word. It is. But pus. Dirty Sanchez is fun, but pus but she, is she has a, Do you have? A, do you still wear your pierced your no. your belly button ring? I took it out. Um, actually, right before I got married, I had it forever. I had it from. I like took mine 16. out right before I got out of the car. Coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Does your sister still wear a belly button ring? I don't know. Alex, does Riley have a belly button ring? I, I don't know. <laughs> Caroline, do you? Have um, I just took mine out like six months ago, actually. Yeah. So yeah. see, for most people that listening, like this could really help them. <laughs> and realize it's, it's a temporary thing, the belly button ring. It's I have not other something... piercings, though. Pardon me? What? What'd you, what'd you say? <laughs> I have other piercings, though. Got it. That's all. It's okay. I got it. I understand. <laughs> I saw the questions you were asking for crank calls. I know I where you're I think she has her nipples pierced. Oh God! <laughs> Mine are stop. actually. <laughs> my man boobs are growing face, so but much. I don't want to. Okay. I'm gonna pierce my. I'm man. not showing you my face. But <laughs> <laughs> I think people should pierce themselves together. Wow! Be like paper dolls. That's like the human human centipede. That's lovely that you know that. Yeah. Oh, she's. <laughs> well, that South Park helped promote that. Yeah. They no, know. she knew it before. No. She taught me. She's the one that told me. Came home from teaching one day to tell me to watch the film Teeth. Do you know the film Teeth? Yeah. 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 Wow. All right. Well, the human centipede, the the trailer for it is funny. It is funny because it's so grotesque, but it's, you know, 
we, what I'm sad about is that we push the boundaries so much that, you know, they'll show violence on the news to the point of no, at least there would be a warning. This is a, four in the afternoon. Kids shouldn't be watching this. They don't even sensitive content. They don't rarely are they saying that now they're mm -hmm. going right. And, you know, and the this 20th anniversary of 9-11, this is a good way to end, end this podcast. Um, <laughs> on but, an up note? Well, I, yeah, it's an up note. It's really up. Well, it's up because we, we're hopefully moving forward. 9-11. Okay. Go anyway, ahead. they showed footage they shouldn't have shown. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I feel that all the time. And I, talk about triggering and... Uh, it's terrific. And I remember when it happened. You know what I watched? No. When it happened, Fox ran Mrs. Doubtfire instead of running the footage that we've been watching for, uh, for days. When Fox News? Fox Broadcasting Oh, Fox Company. Broadcast. <laughs> Fox, News. <laughs> Fox News. Instead of Hannity tonight, we have Mrs. Doubtfire. No, they, was, they, were, they ran Mrs. Doubtfire and they just complained about it the whole time. Who does he think he is dressing up as a woman? My, uh, but I, that was beautiful to me that they ran that movie. But you can also make things light. Like uh, uh, she's probably shy about this, but my daughter Jackie here is very prolific in musical theater, and bought the rights to the Human Centipede and did it as a one woman show <laughs> at the uh, at our temple. And it was just what a night. Did you what do a, it on oh. Shabbat? No, Passover. It's, oh. Passover. That's so sweet. Yeah. yeah. So that uh, everybody so all the, have the Seder. So the shank then... bone had a different meaning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this night different from all other nights? Because my and face left... is in your head. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you. Bob Saget, who we love and continue to love and uh, want to hear more, watch everything he does. And uh, how, do, how, do we end? how do we end? I don't know. I'm on tour. You're not touring, are you? You're no. doing AGT. No. To you want to plug some dates? Or just, no, look, just go to, to go to bobsaga.com. Yeah. See his dates, see I his movies. I have movie, too many. See... I don't know what, where I'm going. I'm just going everywhere. I haven't got anywhere. So, this is it. Excuse me. Are we going to do a prank call really fast? No. 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 <laughs> That's really funny. That actually was very, very funny. <laughs> She's funny. I'd like to call your mom. Oh, she'll, oh, no, she'll, she'll take your call. It. She'll, she'll do, do it. She'll do it. That's oh, not, never mind. She'll that. prank <laughs> you. <laughs> did she have her nipples pierced? No, but she did get a tattoo with me, though. What it's what's a tattoo of me? No, that'd be funny though. It'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> if she had a tattoo of me, I'd call her. Sure. I would face Would she get her. a tattoo of Bob Saget? Maybe. You'd have to probably pay her something, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pay <laughs> your mom. <laughs> Tat people tattoo people tattoo you on them on themselves. Yeah, I have a, from the movie I did Little Monsters. There's a lot of people that have the Maurice character. I'd right. imagine Bobby too. Pardon me? I'd imagine. Uh, Bobby, there are Bobby tattoos. I don't think there's any Howie Mandel tattoos. There's an actual no, Bobby, there is. somebody with a, Bo there is a Howie Mandel tattoo? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a Bob Saget tattoo? There's a some? lot of them on asses, on breasts, on Pull that up, arms. Bob Saget tattoo. Oh God, and there's a lot of strains of pots, the pots um, uh, of weeds oh, named after me. Kyle would probably get a tattoo of you. Kyle yeah, put, Kyle said, yeah. He would get a tattoo yeah. of you. He put a tattoo of you. Thanks, man, I appreciate <laughs> it. Does he look like he's discerning? Put it on your bag. <laughs> I don't think he'd have a problem with that. No, the, oh, oh, there you are. Oh my God, that's your tattoo. There's a lot. Look of at them. the Bob Saget calf tattoo. Look at the calf. And what is that, it's Bob Saget? So back. weird. That's somebody's whole back. I used to suck dick for coke. Yeah, that was from half baked. Oh mm. my gosh. Now the, is that or not? The, what's the, scary is the different sizes of my head. <laughs> It's just weird. Is it going to rain today? I don't know. How fat is Bob's head? <laughs> that that is amazing. That that's the, the calf. Best. Have you seen them in person? Yeah, that's what I do. No. <laughs> I actually. No, I at do, a show. I, I would do. imagine somebody would walk up and say, no. look at my. Can you look for Howie Mandel tattoos? It's pretty all? scary. Can you take me off the screen? <laughs> it's really upsetting to look It's at just myself. been like an hour of him, us showing him things and him saying, turn that off. <laughs> that's right. There's no tattoo no. of me. Nobody's put a tattoo. No, I saw a deal or no deal one before. Really? Yeah. Is that me right there? Down. No, down. I saw. I saw it. Where? where did you, some. Oh, that's me getting it. What is that? That was where? Is that no. you? No, that's like a guy with a magnifying no. glass. I don't know what that is. That's not me. That's a Bell Lugosi Wolfman type. So these thing. aren't. None of these are me. No. No. No, I'm not. You're, no, I, just I haven't you. reached that status yet. No. You're well, not. I guess I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, Nice pictures of you two together at a there, premiere. There we are, yeah. That's a race to race MS. What's funny, it says your wife. I know. It does. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know how many they times we, we've traveled? Yeah, they do that when you're with your daughter. Yeah. They go, we we checked in the hotel. Was it in Atlanta or was it me and Riley? Was it you know. and me? 
I've they said, M- Mrs. Mandel, would you like to? And they didn't give us separate rooms and things like that. You, wow. You, I said I want a separate room. They just assumed that I was with her. But they go, you know, that's how old we are. Our, our daughters are women. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Off the, we can just keep this up. And thank you so much. And Thank you, and thanks for all the prank calls. I really did enjoy them. Yeah. I thought they were hilarious, especially when we called that pharmacist. We did. Well, you know what? The headline for this is Caroline requests Bob Saget's prank people. Okay. <laughs> That's the end. What a powerful ending. <laughs> a limp noodle. It's kind of whimpered out to nothing. <laughs>